Hello, everyone. Welcome to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Twitch channel, the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games during the time of their release. I am your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight, we are hunting ghosts and getting a bit squirrely as we travel back to the year 2001 for speedruns, including Luigi's Mansion and later Conquer's Bad Fur Day. But before we get to the games, let's get to the announcements. Uh, it's very exciting times here for Games Done Quick. We have three special events coming up in the next three months. The first being an all-woman speedrunning event, Frame Fatales returning with another event that is Fleet Fatales uh, online from November 15th through the 21st. Go to gamesdonequick.com slash Frame Fatales for more information. Volunteer selections are out November 2nd, so if you did submit a volunteer application, be sure to stay tuned for that. West Coast Weekend is December 4th through December 6th, and the schedule will be released for that on November 20th. AGDQ 2021 online is January 3rd through January 10th, 2021. Oh, as I said. And the games list will be released this Saturday, October 31st. So feel free to tweet us at Games Done Quick and tell us what you're hoping will be on the schedule. Uh, you can learn about all of our shows at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. And if you missed any shows or want to revisit past events, just go to youtube.com slash gamesdonequick to check out the VODs. And as always, thank you very much to our wonderful subscribers here on Twitch for making this hotfix content possible. And on that note, let's get into this episode of Time Capsule. I have HD Lax one here with me, ready to speedrun Luigi's Mansion. Hi, HD. Would you like to introduce yourself and your commentary? I would. What's going on, everybody? I'm HD Lax, and I'm joined by my good friend and fellow LM runner, Glitch PhD. Yo, what's going on, everyone? I am Glitch PhD, as HD Lax just mentioned, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be talking through this whole journey throughout the mansion. Yes, he is. He's going to be my wingman here. Uh, I guess I'm ready whenever whenever y'all are. For sure. I uh, can give us a countdown. All right. Sounds good. Three. Two, one, go. All, All right. right. So right away. Thank you. Um, we're going to be selecting the hidden op, the hidden mansion mode for uh, this speed run. All the speed runs for this game are ran on the uh, hidden mansion. It's basically just a new game plus from what the normal mansion is. You unlock this mode after one completion of normal mansion. And uh, some of the perks to this mode are... Uh, you get a faster vacuum. It's approximately 1.5 times stronger than uh, the normal mansion vacuum. Uh, and you'll also notice that I'm playing on the JP version of the game. JP is approximately 20 seconds faster, right around there, than English. And one of the perks of running on JP rather than English is you uh, take half damage when you get hit. On English, you take double damage. Um, and then with JP also comes certain uh, exclusive skips that you normally wouldn't be able to do on English. And I'm also running 100%, so we're going to have to collect money along the way to get the A rank by the end of the game. Got a lot of ghosts to hunt with that hundo. Mm. Yes, we do. We got 50 boos as well. Ooh. Yeah, so, um, as HD just said, he basically explained most of what he's gonna do. Um, yeah. Oh my so, god, dude. Oh, two mushrooms. Two poison mushrooms. All right, that's not good. That's some kind of bad RNG. Hopefully he doesn't get hit. So, if you get hit by a poison mushroom, uh, you'll become small. You'll lose coin, some coins that you have. You'll be smaller for like 10, maybe 15 seconds. And, uh... Of course, you know, that'll lose some time, they'll even lose some health and some money. So it just, it's not a good time overall. Uh, Man, never a fun time. So you'll notice that instead of going for a double here, he's going to be singles. So the reason why he's doing this is because if you get that first one on the right, single, and then you get the other one, the next double will spawn faster. Uh, as opposed to getting him in a double, it'll just spawn the same rate, which will be slower. Uh, so... And he's also getting money. He got a speedy spirit from that wardrobe, and he's hoping to get more RNG money, which he did. So he's just going to be collecting various bits of money throughout the mansion. Sometimes there might be spots where it's RNG, whether or not you'll get something from that. Uh, but there are other spots where it's just you'll, you're automatically guaranteed to get uh, certain bits of money, like maybe from a ceiling fan or something. You'll get dollar bills automatically. 
Yeah, okay. and I just want to point out that we got three poisonous mushrooms in the first, like, two minutes of the game, and... <laughs> Poisonous mushrooms have a 1 in 10 chance of spawning, so that's just ridiculous luck. Yeah. But um, uh, moving right along yeah. here, we're moving on to the portrait ghosts. Uh, these vary greatly from, you know, the normal uh, ghosts that we were catching just a few minutes ago. Um, each portrait ghost shows its heart in different ways, and you have to kind of manage that on a on a basis but uh yeah for that one we just turn our back to him and he'll show his heart for this one uh we just pull back this curtain and she'll show her heart all right yeah so portrait ghosts um like hg said they're quite different you'll have to find something that makes it tick basically so we'll show its heart uh and he's already got two of them uh there'll be plenty more throughout the mansion they each have their own unique personalities and everything, which is something that you don't see too often anymore with some games. I mean, as far as, like, LM goes, even. But, um, yeah, so he's already got two of them, and now we're coming up to the Area 1 boss, uh, the baby Chauncey. So I've already sucked up a mother and a father, and now we're getting the, the child, uh, essentially. There is another... Uh, next door to this room was also another locked door that we won't be going until Area 3, because oddly enough, um, when they were making this game, they had to figure out some way to make it longer, so they figured putting keys that unlock certain doors in other parts of the mansion, kind of backtracking a bit, just to make it a little bit longer. Uh, but, yeah. So. Yeah, and something pretty cool with these area bosses here is you fight them in these pretty cool arenas. As you'll see, we're actually inside of Chauncey's crib right now. So Chauncey actually shrunk Luigi and stuck him inside of his crib. That's why Chauncey's so huge. As for the uh, psychedelic background, I've got no explanation for that. But I mean, you know, it's... Uh... It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try to speed up these cycles as fast as I can. So I want these rocking horses to charge at me as fast as possible. So I'm moving to each side of the arena to uh, trigger those rocking horses. And then I'm intentionally going to let Chauncey go around 50 HP there, because if he dips below 50 HP, he'll throw an extra cycle of rocking horses at you. And uh, that wastes about three seconds. And Chauncey can't be one cycle. He's actually only one of two portrait ghosts in this game that cannot be one cycle, the other being the final boss. But uh, yeah, ideally you want to leave him at 50 or just right above there. And I'm going to get hit right here. That way I can have some invincibility frames to catch this ball because you wouldn't be able to catch this ball otherwise. So uh, that's the reason I got hit there. And area one is done. Just like that. Uh, yeah, and then we got this chest. Now, there is also a category called Any% percent, which uses the Out of Bounds uh, glitch. I think it's been showed off a few times at Games Done Quick over the years, even by the man himself, HD Lax. But, yeah, I think I showed it off like two months ago. Yeah. So, because of that chest, the way it spawns, you can walk behind it as it starts to spawn, and once it spawns, it'll push Luigi a little bit into the wall so you can just walk a little bit forward and then either knock on the painting or use your vacuum to finish pushing yourself through the wall. And you can basically skip the, mo the majority of the game and beat the game in like about eight or nine minutes. So, but we're not going to be doing that. Instead, we're going to be doing 100%, like we said, all the ghosts, all portrait ghosts, all the booze, uh, at least 100 million in money, because that's what, how we can get the A-rank mansion at the end of the game, uh, which essentially clarifies 100%. But, yeah. yeah. And this run's only just getting started. We got a lot more gameplay to go. It's going to get a lot more interesting. So after each area, uh, you'll kind of get an idea of how your money pace is. So currently I have 5.1 million. That's pretty good for uh, an area one money, money count. So at the end of area two, I kind of want to aim for maybe between 19 and 20 million. Depends on how my money RNG is. 
Yeah, because some some runs you can have, you can just have a lot of money and be like, okay, I'm really good. I don't even need to like, get certain money that I was gonna get anyways. But uh, yeah, sometimes you're not that lucky, so you just kind of gotta make right. do. Using the uh, grabber ghost right there, and because the grabber ghost doesn't deal any damage, you can just easily have him grab onto you and then shake him off to get to the other one so they can get in the double. So, some of the ingenuity of the speedrun. And, uh, yeah, yeah. now yeah. we're coming up to our first bit of RNG here. Do you want to explain uh, early release? <laughs> right, so this is always something that will cause runners um, pain and misery, or it can be very fun. I don't know. But, um, so basically, this is. People have said it's a 50 50 chance. I want to say it's like a 60 40 chance, depending on. You know, it's, it seems like you can be a bit more unlucky at yeah. times. Or if you're me, it's like 10%, 90%, because <laughs> I, I never get it for some reason, you know? So, these ghosts will show their heart off right about right, you know what, now, and he did get it. Okay, so that's 10 seconds earlier than what it could have been. If he didn't get it right there, then they would have shown their hearts off, you know, 10 seconds later after that. So that's just some time loss just based off of RNG. And luckily he did get it, so he didn't actually lose any time. Yeah, see, uh, I just used reverse psychology there. I said I never get it, so that kind of tricked them into giving it to me, you know? <laughs> see, yeah. I, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> the floating world in this. And we're ultimately going, uh, grabbing a poster through the wall. Uh, and he did get it nice, so you can basically hit a button on the other side of the wall. You're not even supposed to know that this is a wall that will come back by now, but you will see yeah, just shortly after this double, he will be hitting the button, the wall will go back, and then you'll see that there's a button on the other side in this far part of the room, uh, which normally would have the poster, but he can suck it up through the uh, wall, and that's just a little bit faster. Yeah, for some reason, Luigi can just stick his vacuum through that wall, and he can just reach the poster's hitbox, which is halfway across the room, and he can just suck it off the wall. Shut up through another Jared. wall, I might add. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Shout out to Jared's Giants and, uh, I believe, B-Man 3000, because they were the ones that found that glitch uh, back in the day. The homies. The homies. Yeah. So now we've uh, let all the booze out of the mansion. So now Luigi just, you know, he's like, what am I going to do, dude? I just let all the booze out of the mansion. So then Ige calls you, then he's going to talk to him again, and then we'll have to capture the booze. Now the booze are also RNG, depending on where they are in each room. Uh, sometimes you can get really good spots, sometimes you can get really bad spots, and depending on the rate that you're going in the mansion, like... The, like, each boo runs off of, like, this universal clock, so after, like, a certain amount of time on the universal clock, a boo can, like, switch from one object in the room to another. Uh, it just depends on, sometimes depending on how good or bad you might do, depending okay. on the timing. And, unfortunately, he didn't get the best RNG there, uh, yeah. so... I was shooting for a tech skip there, so... If I would have gotten the tech skip, I would be able to skip all this text right here, and that would save me upwards of seven seconds, depending on the luck that I got. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be seeing some uh, other forms of text, but we should be seeing at least one other in the uh, run. But essentially, tech skip, how that works is when you're getting a boo, you'll notice that Ige will call you onto the Game Boy Horror like that, but, um, Sometimes, what can happen is, if you suck up a boo and right immediately after suck up some sort of a cloth, it will cancel out Eged calling you, which will save, you know, some seconds, like it's Yeah, Luigi well, and... just prioritizes uh, the last thing that enters his vacuum before yeah. that text starts, and the last thing being the cloth, so it just skips the text. Yeah, so, uh, and that's definitely good because, um the first boo, you'll get longer text, a longer text box. Uh, so if you get that right off the bat, it'll save you a little more time. Uh, there will be a thing where at five boos, Ega will call you with a special event, basically, where you can go into one of the rooms that was previously locked for no known reason. Uh, but you can automatically- the bathroom. Yeah, the toad. 
the toad's just sitting right next to a toilet. Um, sounds kind of suggestive, but basically, yeah. You can just, right here if I booze, Ega will call you and it'll be like, Hey, uh, why don't you go cool off in the washroom? And then you can go in there uh, and get a key. Um, now, if you did happen to get a tech skip on the fifth boo, it will cancel out the event entirely, I'm pretty sure, and you won't be able to get into, um, yeah. this room, but right. we're not gonna do that, so. We're gonna get this key from the toilet. Toad's crying, but that doesn't matter, we're just gonna mirror warp because it's a little bit faster, and we don't really need to talk to Toad in order for it to be 100%. Because doing that does nothing for the money count or any of the ghosts, which are the main objectives. Yeah, you're only required to talk to Toad in uh, max percent. Max percent requires you to do literally everything. You have to collect every piece of money. Um, even RNG all, money. Yeah, even RNG money. You have to get all gold frames on the portrait ghosts. Uh, talk to all toads. What else? I feel like there's something I'm missing. Yeah, just basically just getting everything. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> basically the mansion everything. dry, leaving nothing left behind. But uh, we're coming up to a pretty neat save and quit strat here. Right, so this is where we first get introduced to the elements in the game. So you'll notice HD is getting a boo as he's opening the chest, and then once he sucks up the boo, he can go right into the fire medallion, grab it while he's talking to Toad, or to uh, Toad, to Egad, sorry. <laughs> because Egad will be talking to you about the boo first, and normally he will talk to you about the fire medallion, but if you get the boo first and then grab it while he's talking to you, uh, you can save and quit and then load back up from the file again. And when you do that, you can skip a long bit of text that Ega will tell you about the fire medallion and other ele elements that you can get throughout the mansion for your advantage. Uh, and you also won't have to escape the room by lighting candles. Uh, and you also noticed HD did just search and get a gold bar. So again, sometimes you might have to look for certain bits of RNG money to help boost his money count up to 100 million, at least. Yeah, ideally, I would like to get some pearl dupes. Uh, that's basically a glitch in the game where you collect two pearls at once rather than just one uh, after you suck up a portrait ghost. Well, I guess, firstly, we should talk about what the pearls are. So when you suck up a portrait ghost, they'll drop uh, pearls, which are a form of currency in the game. They uh, will help contribute towards your ranking at the end of the game. Uh, so. You know, ideally, I want to one cycle every portrait ghost so I can get the big pearl, which is worth one million. Uh, the medium pearls are worth one hundred thousand, and the smalls are worth fifty thousand. So if I can duplicate some big pearls, and I'm in good shape. Yeah. Also, he got um, chest cutscene skip, which normally whenever you finish a room and there's a chest that spawns the uh camera will auto lock onto the uh, chest for a few seconds but if you grab something much like when you get a tech skip on a boo uh grabbing the item will interrupt the cutscene right so. so i went for a pearl dupe there didn't get it um so basically how you execute a pearl dupe is um you walk into the pearl and suck it up on the same frame so to do that i need an element so i can do a vacuum skip because every time luigi pulls out his vacuum he'll he'll stop to pull it out um but if you have an element you can just hold down l and then r and he won't do that vacuum animation so you can just walk right into it and suck it up on the same frame and it'll duplicate pretty neat yeah um, so as you also may have seen, uh, when he was in the room with Butler, uh, he got the boo, and then he got the, uh, he went into the mouse hole at the same time. That's the, that's one of the main Japanese exclusive glitches, that's one of the only Japanese exclusive glitches that we use in the run, actually. Um, so that, doing that, you can just skip, uh, of course, the, uh, text from Egad, and he'll be doing it again right here after getting some more money. And yeah, there we go. Because you cannot do that on US or the PAL uh, or European versions of the game because they patched that out. Because Japanese version, much like a lot of games that came out originally in Japan, they'll be the glitchiest. 
and then they'll have time to work out the kinks uh, later on through later releases, such as the American version or the European version. Uh, and funny enough, the European or the PAL version of this game for the Hidden Mansion is actually quite different. Uh, the entire mansion is mirrored. Like, think of it like Mario Kart Mirror Mode or Mirror Cup. Um, it's basically like that, but there's also other ghosts in different places. They're harder ghosts. Uh, the boos are a lot more relentless. Sometimes they can literally whip across the room at the speed of light. Uh, so that's quite a different game in itself. Only on the Hidden Mansion, of course. They wanted to do that for the other versions, but they ran out of time to do it for any other version, so... And he's also going, right now we're talking to Melody P. Nesima, and she's playing us a song which will play one of two songs, either the Super Mario Bros. Underwater theme, or the Super Mario Bros. 3 Athletic theme. So it looks like HD got the Super Mario Bros. 3 Athletic theme, uh, which is only a third of a second slower because of an extra little bit of text. So really it's not that bad. But Yeah, not only that, it's, it's also the third option rather than the first. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, getting, um, pearl dupes in this is, uh, it can be kind of challenging, uh, because of the timing can be kind of weird. You have to do it when you're, like, kind of close to the pearl, and then hold down L to shoot a ball of element, and then right after, hold an R to, um, to use your vacuum. And so far, as far as I'm concerned, personally, I, I've only noticed it was possible to be done on Japanese. I've I've tried it on US like hours and hours and I never seem to get it right, but apparently it is possible to do on US. I've just never seen it before. But yeah, a little comical banana slip feels bad yeah. man, but <laughs> I haven't done that one in a hot minute. That was funny. Uh hey man, you know. Get out of shape a little bit, you know of course things are gonna happen like that, but it's alright, it's all good. Shake it off. Oh, Gonna be trying to go for a um Actually wait, you're not even going for the cutscene skip, never mind. You're just going for the Ruby and yeah, the I couldn't go for yeah. the uh the yeah. cutscene skip there because the gem didn't spawn on the ground. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got water, which is the second element. There are three elements all together uh in the mansion. There is the fire, water, and ice. Ice will be getting right after this area. Uh, so you may have noticed that HD uh, lit the candles in here and then sucked up the little cake or pile of cheese or whatever it is that is Oh, we gotta do. Mr. Lux, hey, let's go, large dude. Nice. Alright, so that's an extra million in the bank. Not not too shabby, you know? Yeah, I'll uh, definitely take that. So, yeah, so basically HD ran through the whole ordeal with Mr. Lugs because Mr. Lugs will shoot fire and that can go on for a little while so while he was doing that he ran through the kitchen and did things he needs to do and then of course as you saw he also got the large portal which is an extra million and yeah, Mr. Pocket. Lugs is actually an optional portrait ghost there are five optional portrait ghosts that we're going to encounter along the way and uh, if we were running no out of bounds we wouldn't capture them but since this is 100% we have to Especially for a lot of people that uh, do like very high competitive 100% runs, they'll try to go for a lot of dupes in the route, which means they can skip other like gems, which if you get certain gems, you know, uh, cutscene will play like this, you'll get the ruby and the little cutscene will play. Um, but if you get so many dupes in the run, uh, you can skip some of that money, uh, so it can be a little bit faster, of course. Like I said, it's kind of hard to get a pro do, but unless if you just timed it down perfectly and you're a master at it, then... Yeah, in my PB attempts, I go for a five dupe route, so I need five dupes total by the end of the game, and uh, all that goes toward just skipping other gems, and most of that time comes from uh, the gem cutscene, because you'll see Luigi will do that little dance every time he collects a gem, and uh, all that time just adds up, so you want to try to get as many dupes as possible. But obviously, for the sake of a marathon, I'm going to be collecting those gems to ensure that I have the 100 million by the end of the game. Right, because God forbid you get just a little bit under that, then it's like, well, that wasn't really 100%. But yeah, anyways, um, so Bogmire, the second uh, boss in the game, 
Uh, so we're going to be getting it. You can get Bogmire in one cycle, so we can try to do that here. Uh, looks like Bogmire was giving a little bit and then taking, so... Yeah, that was pretty usually, good. Yeah, actually, it wasn't too bad. Uh, usually, you want to be in control of Bogmire because he can start pulling you as well. If he pulls you, you'll have to, like, hold back until... Uh, hold away from him until you can uh, gain control of him again. But mainly, whenever you're sucking up ghosts in this game, you want to just tap back because on on Hidden Mansion, uh, your vacuum is just a little more powerful. So each time you tap back, you get down 10 HP. So like a regular gold ghost, you just tap down once away from the ghost, and you can get him right down into your vacuum, easy as pie. But um, with Bogwire there he might try to pull you, so you might want to gain control of him and then eventually get into a one cycle. Because if you just risk it, there is maybe a good chance that you won't get the one cycle. But it's one of the only two uh, bosses in the game that you can actually one cycle. Uh, yep. And the third one is really difficult, but it's doable. Yeah, <laughs> the so speed, hopefully... speed run strats definitely make it a lot more, a lot more manageable. Oh yeah, casual people. I, I feel for you. <laughs> it's not I feel fun. For you as well. <laughs> I remember I'd I'd sit down on the floor trying to do it with my Spider-Man gloves on that I had for no reason. I don't know why I was wearing Spider-Man gloves, but you know, and then I just, I screwed it up, and then I'm like raging at it, and then I just walked away from the GameCube for a little bit. But either way, enough about me. Um, twenty. Point five million, I think that was. Yep, that's what that was. Point point five million. Yeah, that's not. That's 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 pretty good. So. Uh, yeah. So now we're gonna be going through. Uh, doing another door unlock. Yep. Yeah. So as you'll see, after you complete each area, that area uh, actually lights up. So the entirety of the area two hallway is now lit up. It's pretty cool. And, uh, moving right along into area three here, we get our first glimpse of Mario and his whereabouts. Because we were trying to search for so long because Luigi basically won a mansion that it, in a contest he didn't even enter. So it's basically like the spam emails you might get a lot. Uh, and there's Mario in the painting. Uh, kind of unfortunate. Now he's like, help me, even though it's in Japanese, but basically on the English version, he says, help me. and. Luigi can't really say anything because he might alert King Boo there, but he just tries to reach for his brother with no luck because he can't fit through that lion's head. And not only that, Mario's in a painting and he can't reach back. Exactly. <laughs> so, well, that's like kind of sad and sad moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's finally, finally see where Mario has been this entire time because he's just kind of... He basically, as the story goes, Luigi called Mario to say, Hey, look, I want a mansion. And then Mario's like, oh, really? That's cool. So then he runs up to the mansion first before Luigi. And all of a sudden, just like gone, Luigi gets there. Nothing to be seen. It's just an empty mansion. is dark. So and he's kind of scared. You have to hmm? listen to Luigi cry out for his brother like the whole yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, especially, like I said, if you... um. If your health gets down lower, uh, you'll hear Luigi get a bit more in distress when he's trying to call for Mario because he just wants to get out of there, dude. He's had enough. He wants to go to bed. He wants to see Mario. He just wants to chill for the night. But basically, um, yeah, so Biff Atlas, HP just sucked that up, tried to go for another Pearl Dupe. I don't think he, he did not get the large Pearl Dupe. Uh, I don't think, did you get a medium dupe or no? I don't know. I wasn't looking at my medium count. Maybe. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, outside in the courtyard there, uh, we collected Mario's letter. Um, I don't think we've mentioned Mario's items, have we? No. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, so um, we've already collected Mario's hat and Mario's letter, um, respectively both in the laundry room and then out in the courtyard just now. Uh, so... When you go against, when you go and see Mario in the painting, uh, you might also have come across Mario's hat at first, but you will also see a toad that we didn't talk to, um, and he will mention that he saw Mario in the painting, but he also noticed that Mario apparently left some of his whereabouts throughout the mansion. How he knows, I don't quite remember. Oh, that's but, you, dude. Oh, that's, that's yeah, that's something of beauty. 
<laughs> Even though it's not going to help us, because that skew would be something you'd see in any percent. But essentially, um, a toe will be telling you that Mario left about five items throughout the mansion. Uh, and we've already collected two of them, so we're going to use the rest of these for a portrait ghost that will tell us more about Mario's whereabouts. Uh, that'll be a little bit later. But for now, HD will be trying to get a text skip, hopefully, on this. We'll see. Boo. Yeah, the tablecloth not cooperating. Okay, because, maybe not. Okay, well, it's, you know, it's a little questionable now that because was, uh, the tablecloth is gone. It was a little sketch, but uh, we're just going to look right past that. That never happened. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so aside from that, we've also got ice, which is the final element in the game. I'll be using that for one of these... Portrait Ghost that we'll be coming up against. Uh, first we'll get Nana, who's just kind of doing her crocheting or knitting, I should and say. Then, uh, yeah. She attacks us with yarn balls and shoots laser beams out of her eyes. Because, you know, um, Nintendo. <laughs> I, I mean, what else can you talk it up to? Because, you know, Grandma with laser eyes. I mean, you know, it's kind of kind of spooky, you know. But, uh, Going for another pearl dupe, unfortunately, you know, like I said, pearl dupes are kind of hard to get, but... I've gotten some really bad luck this run. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> this like, is, it's... again... Yeah, this is like I was saying with the, um, the universal clock for these boos. If you take a certain amount of time, maybe if you just are a little bit slower uh, throughout the game, you'll notice that sometimes the boos will might switch to a certain uh, object in the... Uh, game in the room, which can put you at a bit of a disadvantage. Like you saw there, he went from one side of the room to the other, just to only go back to the other side of the room again. Uh, so that's some RNG that's just really not fun. But. Yeah, and it's even more detrimental in those bigger rooms because you have more space to uh, cover. Yeah. <laughs> so we used uh, ice on Miss Petunia, who was just taking a shower, but we we're like, you know what, you're coming with me anyways, because. <laughs> Um, yeah, again, Nintendo, Luigi, he just wants to find his brother. Things might happen in the process, because this mansion was built, basically, by King Boo. Uh, King yeah, Boo and his in Legion the story, of Boos. I believe in the story, Egad says it only appeared a few days ago, so it just basically appeared out of thin air, just very recently. Yes, this is just a, uh... It's almost like, is this a figment of our imagination? Not quite, because it's still tangible. I mean, Luigi, you know, we can say it, but after a while, you know, after the game is done, we'll be tearing down the mansion and building something nicer. Especially because it's 100% we'll be building something in a lot nicer. Uh, hopefully so, an a rank mansion. Hopefully. So, as you saw, we performed some sort of a ritual with these candles, and then that spawned more ghosts. Uh, Try to usually get mostly doubles. Uh, we could have had a triple there for the last uh, three ghosts, but it really doesn't save much time at all to get a triple. It maybe saves like a tenth of a second from what I heard, but you really don't need to do it like that. So just a double and a single will work fine. Uh. All right, we're coming up to the fabled moonshot here. So moonshot is very interesting. So. There's going to be some asteroids that are falling down beside us, and we have to catch one and shoot the moon. But I don't know. If it makes sense that you're going to hit the moon, odds are you won't, because this is just weird. So we're really the weird angle to try to get. Yeah. Um, but he got it first oh, try. We got it. Awesome. <laughs> he just blew up the moon. I mean, you know, it's just nothing better than just you go inside the mansion. The mansion's just, I mean, the moon's just in the mansion. And along with outer space and everything, he just blows up the moon. Uh, keep keep in mind that he blew up the moon now, because we'll see later on. I'll point something out that will be a little bit sus. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, um, anyways, yeah. on the moon's core is the third Mario item, Mario Star. So we're going to go ahead and collect the last two items here shortly and then take them to the fortune teller at the end of the area. Yeah. Uh. Right. So, 
going down, going back down to area two. This is where we start doing a little bit of backtracking. Uh, you'll see a lot more backtracking in area four because that's mainly where you're just jogging up and down the mansion while you're going through certain rooms because, of course, this game can be quite short, especially even for casual players. Um, but, you know, Nintendo tried to do what they could to it, expand the length of the game just a little bit, but... Yeah, so we're gonna start off with the um, projector in the projection room, and then we'll see these invisible grabbers, kind of like the ones we you might have seen in uh, the mirror room where he got the fire medallion. Uh, you might have noticed that you'd see the ghosts in the mirror, but not, uh, not in, you know, on the floor right in front of you. Uh, you might also see their shadow up against the uh, projector screen in here. Like that, so you'll see, that you can kind of see where they are, but... I guess the last triple, nice. Always good. Uh, we're gonna find the blue. Get the love. Four out of five. Ooh, a lot of uh, RNG unfortunate events because, yeah, you know, RNG. Sadly, I've gotten pretty unlucky this run, but what are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, couple, um, sorry, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say a couple of our chatters mentioned uh, that this game gave them some nightmares back in the day. Uh, I was going to ask, did either of you find this, uh, anything in the game particularly terrifying? Like, what were your first experiences like in Luigi's Mansion? <laughs> so I think I first played this game when I was like six years old and it, it was extremely terrifying. Um, I particularly found the butler to be yeah, uh, kind of scary. Oh, gosh. The weirdo butler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just um, kind of rolls. <laughs> That's right. when you get the first game with weirdo butler. Oh, <laughs> uh, I yeah. <laughs> well, um, for me, yeah, I played this game first in two thousand back in two thousand and four when I first got my GameCube when I was five years old, and uh, yeah, there were some moments that I was like kind of spooked by, especially. Um, one in Area 4, which, I don't know, I've always been sort of a weird kid, uh, when it came to certain things, getting scared of certain things, uh, Aww. particularly in Area 4, uh, where you go down to where, um, King Boo is, the final boss, uh, if you try to go there before, you get the certain amount of boos, which are 40 boos, um, if you go there before the certain amount, uh, King Boo will kind of pop out in front of the door and just kind of, like, interrogate you a little bit and then send you back to the parlor. For whatever reason, that kind of stuck with me, and I was just like, I'd be Aww. in bed, laying in bed at the middle of the night, just, you know, in the dark, I'm like, I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep, okay. <laughs> just but, thinking about it. Yeah, it, it was nothing to get really super scared over, but it's just something that was kind of weird. So, I mean, no, yeah. Aside from that, me just, like, kind of just playing around the mansion, because I was just like, ooh, this is nice, this is nice. You know, I kind of vibed with the game, but, uh, yeah. This game can be can be a little bit for some younger minds, but not not too much. It's not like it's an over top over the top uh, horror game or anything. But yeah, I I think originally this game was gonna have a T for teen rating, oh, wow. but uh, they they kind of had to uh, narrow uh, it down a bit for uh, yeah. It was it what, was what kind of Nintendo game is T for teen? You've never heard of that, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean. Yeah, you know, there, there's some, there's Melee, you know, we got uh, Star Fox Assault. We got some things like that, but again and again, like, you know, a Mario game that's never really been teen, aside from, like, Super Smash yeah. Brothers. But, um, I think, well, yeah. Originally, you were saying before the show that this wasn't even supposed to be a game. Uh, yeah, actually. Um, back when the developers originally, developers, sorry, originally created that, um, they were going to just make it a tech demo, showing off the GameCube's power, showing the lighting off and everything, compared to the Nintendo 64, which was the previous uh, home console at the time. Uh, so they kind of just like were running with the uh, tech demo idea. Then they were kind of just like, you know what, we're going to launch the GameCube soon. Why don't we just make this into a full-fledged game? So they did. And luckily for them, I'm glad they did, because I this is probably one of my favorite games of all time. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, good, good move on their part. Yeah, I mean, some of the people were happy, were happy with it because they're like, "Where is our Mario game? We want, you know, Mario." So they got Mario Sunshine, not but a year later. But uh, yeah. 
So, right. So, um, I think we've seen uh, HD has a bit of unfortunate RNG here and there. Um, he's also got a speedy spirit from the twins room. We got the twins. Got knocked up a little bit, but that's all right. You know, one bar of fire. He didn't have to preserve his fire just a bit. Um, because sometimes when you uh, use the vacuum, you can pull out, as was mentioned earlier with the vacuum cancel, if you quickly hold down the uh, L trigger, uh, because it's an analog and digital trigger at the same time, if you click it all the way down to the digital part of the trigger, um, it will shoot an, uh, an element ball. Mainly when it's uh, a lit up room, it'll shoot an element ball right away. Uh, and there's the tech skip, by the way. Yeah, nice. Oh, so that was one of the tech skips that was mentioned earlier. Uh, so we don't have to see Egad uh, talking about the boo, which is always cool. But um, yeah, so with the vacuum cancel, uh, if you shoot an element ball and then pull out uh, your vacuum right after, it will skip the animation of you pulling out your vacuum entirely, uh, which just saves a little bit more time. Uh, for everything and a similar thing would be uh if you have an element and you're going from a lit up room to a dark room uh you tap l just a little bit so you can skip luigi pulling out the flashlight so you might see them you might see him do that a little bit but now we're coming up to the fun part of the game really a lots of fun um yeah a minute and a half of mashing yeah a minute and a half of mashing you know this is if you do this over and over, odds are you're gonna get carpal tunnel syndrome. So <laughs> I think yeah. luckily I haven't uh, gotten it yet. But um, you might get little small breaks like here. You might not get a little bit. Might not get text box here and there. But mostly lots of texting. I know whenever I do that, I usually use my uh, upper arms to like shake my arms to mash. Uh, and I will notice. It's almost like I'm working out, but even though I'm not, I'm just playing a video game. But I mean, <laughs> it kind of feels like that after just doing that for a little bit. But um, yeah, yeah, you really have to come up with creative ways to mash in this game, because if you're not careful, it, it really can uh, damage your wrists. Have you ever had to take like an extensive break from speedrunning or speedrunning this game just because of like injury, kind of? I have. I've had instances where my hands and my wrists would just burn all day long. So I would kind of go on a couple week hiatus from the game. But uh, yeah, yeah nothing yeah. really permanent, luckily. Well, that's luck lucky. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Run this game. You might get injuries. Actually, no. <laughs> no, you, you won't. <laughs> As long as you know, like, you know, you just, you go into it, even if you don't mash that fast, like, it's not even that big of a deal, you know, it's just, it only becomes a big of a, bit of a big deal when you start getting, uh, better times, but, yeah. Would you have, like, any advice for, for people that might want to get into speedrunning this game, or? Um, yeah, so, I will, uh, I will say, like, you know, when I first ran this game, when I first started learning to run this game, I, uh, I was just kind of like, oh yeah, you know, this is cool. I had done a uh, casual fun race on Normal Mansion with uh, some other friends of mine online. And I got about like an hour and a half time, which really isn't too bad, especially for it being Normal Mansion and that being like my first run of the game ever. Uh, so it really doesn't take... This game is pretty beginner, pretty beginner friendly, I'd say, in comparison to something like mario 64 with all the platforming uh it's really pretty easy movement um it might just be kind of different experience because i mainly started running on no out of bounds uh so that might be a thing you might want to get into if you want to run this game a lot of people also run chauncey key which is now a category extension but um mainly just like no out of bounds for the main game if you want to get into hundo you know that's up to you because it's a little bit more. You have to deal with money and all that, but yeah, it's a big step up from no out of bounds and just the basics. But a lot yeah. of people consider this to be the best category, and I'd have to agree with them. So this is definitely your preferred category. To oh, consider. absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Especially well, thank you when you're showing it up. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is one of the most beginner-friendly uh, speed runs out there. Um, now we have quite a few tutorials out there, so if this sparks your interest, uh, go to speedrun.com/lm. We have a link. We have a link to join the Discord. Uh, 
and some links to all the tutorials out there. So you should definitely check them out. Yeah. Oh, I guess people are talking about frame dropping on the stream. I don't know. Uh, that might be a bit unfortunate, but okay. All right. That's cool. Um, so I will still talk either way, uh, <laughs> especially if this is on recording or something. But anyways, so uh, we just went through the Safari uh, Safari room uh, and you noticed that we uh, HD used the deer's head on the wall to kind of just like start spawning the ghosts. And he had to have ice uh, in order to get that. He got that from the fridge uh, in the kitchen. And you also noticed that he did start watering this flower where Spooky the dog is, um, or where he was, rather. And uh, you'll have to do that after every area. So as soon as you start seeing, as soon as you see the uh, uh, plant for the first time in Area 2, you gotta water it. As soon as you start Area 3, you're basically, anytime in Area 3, you gotta water it. And then anytime in Area 4, you gotta water it again, and you'll get extra money. And uh, one of them being a gold diamond, which is very crucial to getting the 100%... Um, amount of money uh because each gold diamond is worth 20 million in money so already you get two you can get two of those because yeah two of one... those is basically half the uh game's completion and that's absolutely insane so yeah it's it, it's necessary it's virtually impossible to get 100 million without one of those but uh in max percent the total is 142 million 390 thousand so if you get every bit of money, you can still get a hundred million without either of the gold diamonds, but just barely. Yeah. So. So this is the third boss, Colossus, and using the speedrun strat, he just got some ice from that one statue of the unicorn, and actually he got quite a good amount of the Beautiful. boost, and he will get a one cycle awesome. So that boss can be pretty very finicky. Uh, because the booze, when they, when Bulasis pops on the statue, uh, all the booze will kind of go in different directions. And the fewer booze that are left, um, the more resilient they are. They're just, they don't want to get captured. So if you start spraying some ice, unlike if there were a lot of them, if there was only like a few of them left, uh, the booze will run away from the ice. You have to wait until they attack you in order to kind of catch them in a trap of, uh, a little bit of ice spray when they run through and try to attack you just kind of turn around and spray ice on them but luckily he shot that ice ball and was able to get all of them in one cycle uh, sometimes you can get it to where uh they group up together in such a way that you just use one ice ball shot that gets all the booze um it's happened before to runners um it's not super common but it's also not super uncommon it's just kind of like you know it, it might happen <laughs> but it's definitely a lot easier than trying to do it casually uh, oh for sure it's uh i've died several times back when i played this casually it's just not fun those memories still haunt me yeah and um and that actually with this game uh there was a tool assistant speedrun made of it uh, that also used a different... It was kind of slightly different, uh, where it goes into the middle of the stage, goes all the way to the bottom, and shoots it from an angle, and they just all get it sucked up, like, immediately, super fast. Uh, shout out to Taz Malio for making the... Um, oh, sorry. For making the Taz of this game for No Out of Bounds. Uh, he did that back in the day. Uh, Taz Malio also being the... Uh, Tool says a speedrunner who did who does Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and uh, I, I want to say he's done Paper Mario 64. I could be wrong, but he's definitely done that and Mario Kart Wii as well. But he also took on this game uh, back in 2016. 20, 2016, yeah, okay. I, I, I was gonna say 2015 or something, but that tutorial actually got outdated pretty fast because I think that's right around the time where we changed the No Out of Bounds route. I think we did. Um, I think that's when we swipe. But that's that's when we switched out uh, pipe room and breaker boo, right? Um, it might be uh, pipe room and breaker boo. That was definitely quite something to do. So back in the day, yeah, this route used to be a little bit different with the boos. Um, for no out of bounds. Sorry, excuse me. Um, 
but it, instead, like, uh, we would never used to go to the treasure room, which is the room that you go through the mouse hole right next to the room where the butler is. Uh, we never used to go in there because we'd always just skip that and we'd get uh, some other booze instead, but we found out it was faster uh, to instead go into the treasure room and get that boo and the Van Gore boo. Or if you're if you're skilled enough with it, you can also get a one cycle breaker boo, which yeah, I believe HD will be going for. Uh, yeah, you can substitute that for Van Gore boo. But since this is 100%, obviously I have to go for breaker boo anyways. So it'd be pretty cool if we could get a one cycle on that. It's a very difficult trick. Right. So one cycle breaker boo because um. The way, I don't think we've actually mentioned um, the art pumping in this game, so the way we've captured the booze, or the way that HD has captured the booze um, throughout this run so far, he's been holding in the vacuum, and the he's been holding the left and right triggers at the same time because the left trigger, um, the left trigger will make Luigi blow out something in the vacuum, so that will be like if you have an element, uh, it will blow out the element, or otherwise if you don't have it, it'll just be dust. You'll hold L and R at the same time, and after every 10 HP, let go of the R trigger only, and then quickly repress it. And then you do that every 10 HP. And every time you do that, the boo will do a cackle noise, and every time, um, you know, you, you uh, the boo only has so many cackles. That has 15 cackles each boo. Uh, so that automatically you can get it down to 150 HP. How about this Grimly? <laughs> This Grimly, okay, this Grimly is also something because it's RNG, uh, you might have to wait a little while for it. Um, the world record for the unluckiest Grimly, I believe currently, is 50 seconds by HT Delta. Uh, yeah, you know, we were waiting so long there, I was kind of hoping we would just get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, just get the world record 55 seconds a minute, no. I mean, that'd be horrible, but, um, <laughs> so yeah, that's a bit of other RNG, uh, through the game but so yeah we'll be going uh down to breaker boo as i had said and we'll be going to uh, try to get breaker boo one cycle yeah uh, but uh you'll notice i actually got through that uh blackout without spawning a single ghost so usually ghosts would be spawning all over the mansion but as long as i have my flashlight pointed on the ghost spawn point they can't spawn at all so that's why no ghost spawn and that's also right. why i have my flashlight pointed up in the hallway you're probably curious about that as well. So I just right. have my flashlight pointed up to prevent Luigi from getting scared and losing time. Things we forget about that just kind of like, you know, goes over an LM runner's head. But either way, let me going for Breaker Boot one cycle. So because he's dragging him from the, all the way from the right side of the room to the left side of the room, uh, that doesn't use any cackles. So like I said, the Boo has 15 cackles. And once those are used up, Nice, let's go, dude. Once those uh, cackles are used up, the boo will just dip no matter what you do. You can't keep pumping. It'll just leave the room immediately. Yeah, and but, I, I just yeah. I can't stress it enough. That is a very hard boo to one cycle, and we just got it, so I am pretty happy about that. Which is definitely a lot better, because if you don't get that otherwise, he might go back into the break room, or he'll go into the room across the way, uh, the pipe room, which we'll be getting to a bit later on. Uh, so that'd be just a little bit inconvenient. With a little bit of time, maybe. Uh, ooh. So you might notice that there, uh, the boo got away a little bit there because, uh, in the game, there are certain objects that Luigi will auto-lock onto with a vacuum, uh, such as a heart or a gold bar or even a pearl. So if you're trying to capture a boo and there's a pearl or one of those items nearby, uh, the vacuum might auto-lock, which will break your momentum of capturing the boo. Uh, so, wh when that happens, you'll automatically lose, you know, your cackle right there, and you'll be down one, which is really not good, so he might leave uh, a lot earlier than you want, so you can't one or two cycle the boo. Yeah, um, and, and you can auto-lock onto boos as well, but for whatever reason, if, like, you have a boo, a gold bar, and a heart, for whatever reason, Luigi will prioritize those over the boo. Which is kind of a bummer, unless if you can yeah. manage it really well. But even then, it's really hard, especially depending on where the items are. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Going up through the attic again, like I said, Area 4 is basically just a jog through the mansion up and down and up and down again. Uh, just yeah, extending the game a little more. 
we're basically just trying to fill in as much uh, information as we possibly can because there's really nothing going on at the moment. It's just a lot of backtracking. But uh, yeah, now we're actually getting into some interesting stuff. Right, so this is the territory where a lot of higher HP boos will see. You saw that the Breaker Boo will, or it had 200 HP. You'll see some 300 HP boos. Of course, we're not going to one cycle that because that is humanly just like, basically humanly like, it's, virtually it's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah, virtually impossible. Yeah. I was thinking like asinine or something, but it's just not possible. It's not really doable humanly like RTA. Um, Taz has done it before, uh, and in theory, if you played around with it enough, you can maybe get it, but it's really way too risky for a run, so just getting it to a cycle is really no big problem at all. I mean, even the world record holder, uh, the world record, uh, gets two cycles on these ghosts as well, on these booths. So we've also got the, uh, toy soldiers, and of course, though, each of them have 100 HP. If he wanted to, HD could have gone for a double on these uh, nice, toy soldiers. Nice, another large pearl dip. So that's two extra million in money, which is really, really nice to see. Uh, but yeah, now we're on the roof pop. There's shy guys here. Uh, you could do a thing called the Boston Burn because of the runner Boston Brew. Uh, who mainly did that where oh that was cool you'd burn the oh that's oh. luigi's on fire not fun to see but the ghosts okay i was like they're mainly right next to each other which isn't that bad at all all right we managed to save the double but i didn't anticipate running into that uh little fire ghost there yeah it, it can be a bit risky sometimes especially if um if you're further away from a ghost yeah. uh you can't actually capture it you might also, actually you were gonna it. Uh, I think you were going to bring up the little moon thing here, right? Oh, yeah. So if you might have noticed that we blew up the moon, well, you might have noticed that when we or when uh, HD got the key up there, the moon was still there. So that's like yeah, what, what, what make moon did we blow up? Is it going into like the multiverse sort of realm or is that just a fake moon that King Boo put up because somehow he could have the middle of outer space and the mansion? Which, Are we even on Earth and there's more than uh, one moon? What? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it gets a bit deep, but I mean, no. So, we're at the bet, 150 HP first off, and then hopefully you can just get the boo in here. In the second cycle, which he did nice, which is also because the room was kind of long, he could just drag him to the other side of the room instead of risking, uh, doing another bar pump or two yep. rather than just sucking him up in the middle of the room i covered some ground by manipulating him to the left side of the room which is where i had to exit so that just you know that optimization just saves a little bit of time and it's very, a little bit safer too very minuscule but it saves time Mario's world have multiple moons. Well, I mean, if you look at Super Mario World, you can collect moons. If you look at Mario Odyssey, you can also collect moons mainly. So, I mean, like, in that theory, yeah, <laughs> multiple moons in Mario's world, but I don't know. This is also, is this considered Luigi's world? Because this is a Luigi game. I don't know. Some deep, uh, <laughs> some deep war we're getting into here. He's in that chest. Okay. I okay. It. Nice. Nice. All right. Yeah. Again, Boo can be a pain, uh, but HD managed to managing to get him quite well, actually. Uh, and he should be good. Yes. Oh, yeah, when we are pump, um, we can pump a total of 15 times before a Boo will become unstunlocked and leave the room. That's excluding double cackles and all that. Um, so, if perfect, you can suck up, you know, 150 HP, and that Boo had 150 HP. So, yeah, that was a perfect execution. Pretty awesome. Uh, now Jarvis here, he, he's gonna play a mini game with you where he, each time he pops up from one of the jars, one of those four jars in that row there, uh, you'll have to freeze him. And he'll pop up like six times or is it seven? Seven. Seven times, yeah. Uh, that's five, six. Yeah. And no. so once- Okay, I missed one. <laughs> 
I thought it was six. No. Is it six? I thought it was yeah. seven. Yeah, I, I was always confused about that too. Is it like six or seven? Okay, it's six. Um, the Luigi's Mansion Runner is still learning about the game. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, we don't know anything about this game. What is this, hello? Uh, but, um, yeah, so, did the uh, Jarvis minigame perfectly. Uh, and 200 HP boo. You can try to one cycle this, but it's still kind of hard. But actually, he's trapped! Oh, no! Let's go! Let's go! Dude. Okay, that was that was that was actually really sad. I'm like oh, this this guy's taking him all <laughs> over the place. Alright, alright, let's go. That's, I think that's the first <laughs> time I've ever done that. <laughs> kind of a big pop-off, but I mean hey man, you know that's that's actually really sick and manipulated around the room. Instead of getting that because uh like I said, 15 kaggles maximum, so 150 HP if you're just are pumping, but if you drag him across the other sides of the room, you can just get that in one cycle. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. Now I got 308 people. We're not one cycling this, no way. But again, two cycle. I surprised no myself there with that 200 HP <laughs> man. At this point, anything's <laughs> possible. H hence the pop off. But um, I mean, yeah. He's actually trying. <laughs> uh, maybe not, but. He went into the western post or the uh, western poster, going into the other side of the room there. Uh, that's another little detail. This game has a lot of little details that a lot of people might end up missing, and they might just see it and be like, "Oh, yeah, okay." Like some posters, you might see one poster that just says "monster" in reference to like some of the classic monsters like Frankenstein and Dracula, and um, then there's the western poster, which looks like it could be like. Um, a Clint Eastwood movie or something, you know, a, a typical Western. Uh, anytime you scan uh, a portrait ghost's heart, because each portrait ghost has a heart, anytime you scan their hearts, they'll say something different. Uh, so if you're reading in a text that you can uh, understand, like an English text, you can read it, and then they'll say something about themselves or something just different. Because this game has a lot of um, little things like that, because this game actually... Um, is made by the same people who made Animal Crossing. Uh, so they have lots of little details. You'll notice that Luigi will pick up an item or a key, and he'll pick it up, and there'll be something that'll be said in the text box, then he'll put it in his pocket, much like uh, Villager in Animal Crossing. Because this game has a long list of... Uh, a long line of, this game was made off of this engine, because I believe the Luigi's Mansion game was made off the Animal Crossing engine, and Animal Crossing was made off of... Majora's Mask engine, Majora's Mask made off of Ocarina of Time engine, mm -hmm. Ocarina of Time made off of Mario 64 engine, so there's a long line of, uh, of similarities to these games, but it's a whole tie-in, and that's why you might see some similar things to other games like Animal Crossing. But it's, it's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. But enough about the, uh, <laughs> the game's lore and etc, etc. Um, we're going to the pipe room now. With, yeah, we're actually, uh, yeah. we're getting very close to the end of the game. Yeah, um... But there, there's still some obstacles coming up. We're about to come up on, in my opinion, the two hardest portrait ghosts in the game. Uh, the hardest one, in my opinion, coming up next. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Right, there. yeah, it's gonna be, gonna be interesting to see. So we got a 300 HP boo here. But well, the difference about this boot, for whatever reason, is he's just a lot slower, so it's a lot more doable to manipulate him on either side of the room and get him in one cycle, which HD is attempting to do right now. He might bump into the boot. Oh man, as I've bumped right into there. him so many times. That is, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, so no! <laughs> he got away at like one. <laughs> one HP. <laughs> I was like, he could do that, yeah, but. Again, when you bump into him so many times, that also gets rid of the momentum of sucking up the boo, which will also do away with the cackle, because you'll have to start another cackle. Yeah, um, I, so, I, that, that was ridiculous. I bumped into him like six or seven times. Yeah, but super close, but it's definitely doable a lot more on the, or in RTA as opposed to anything else. Now, I hope that the boo, because we got the cutscene, the boo still won't be there. Yeah, so if um, a boo leaves into another room and then you go into the room not too long after, uh, the boo will still be in the dark room. And you can't capture the boos in the dark room because they all just um, 
their health will go down super, super slow. And even if they're like one or zero HP, because you can get the boo okay. to escape at zero HP. Nice, nice one cycle by HD there. Um, and we got another dupe. Hey, bro. let's go. We got three large. That's actually three extra million in money, dude. Um, so we got this. We gotta get the uh, plant in the um, uh, where Spooky was in the little backyard yep, there. there he is the mm. one hp offender right the there, one that so. got away man yeah so like i was saying even if a boo was down that low in hp in a dark room you still can capture it because that's just the way the game is programmed it just automatically makes the boo dip much like if you ran out of double cackles he'll just dip no questions asked and because this room is quite difficult um getting a boo like this involves a lot of micromanaging little movements here and there uh, but he got it perfectly, just like the Weston, uh, Sir Weston, as you saw, he lit up the logs and started sucking him up. And Weston can drag you, much like Bogmire. Um, actually, any of the ghosts could drag you, but the ones that really, like, drag you no matter what, uh, a lot of the time will be, like, Weston and Bogmire. But, right. but he got that very, very cleanly. Uh, so this is actually really, just a pretty good run overall, I mean... Yeah, I'm actually content with this. I think we might get a 111 or a 112. Yeah. We'll see. I'm actually not too sure what kind of pace I'm on because I don't have my timer up. Uh, but it feels pretty good. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. I, you might even be close close enough maybe to your uh, goal time. I mean, it depends on the time loss between the uh, RNG with the booze and uh, all that. But... Um, yeah, so, sitting room, this was, this was the room that you unlocked, you got the key from this, uh, in the sealed room, which we fell through the chimney on the top of the, uh, mansion, fell through the chimney into that sealed room where you can't escape, uh, except for mirror warping, but you got that there, now we're going to Sue P, who's just trying to get some sleep, but of course, you know, being Luigi, we're gonna capture all the ghosts, in the mansion no ghost left behind essentially uh so we're gonna wake her up say hey you know it's time to wake up she's gonna be like no nah, five more minutes nope you're gonna wake up dude so yeah, it's she's also really difficult to capture so yeah hopefully we get it here another one another ghost where uh she'll be pulling a lot and there's flying projectiles okay we got it perfect and going through the door so that way we won't see the little chest cutscene uh because we'll end up seeing two of them but because he skipped that one we'll only see this one right here dupe to that one too man dupe we're going that, nuts uh, four, on the dupe. four million extra money we'll definitely have oh yeah we're gonna have, have, have the money, money. <laughs> man. no doubt about it i mean if, if somehow like no not even somehow it's just no doubt about it man so, right. you know we gotta go for the boo double here. The boo double, so you can get two boos at the same time in the... Oh, he actually went out to the hallway first, okay. Alright, so HD is manipulating these boos by getting some of their HP down. That way it'll be a little bit easier to, uh, to suck them up. Uh, and you can get them both at the same time. Yeah, we'll so see. Hopefully... Okay, not too bad of heights. Uh... Like my both at the same time. Let's go. Hey, so that also skips um one uh, text box from Egad. So you only get one of one of the text box from Egad calling you saying, "Oh, you did a great job capturing that boo. You want to save your data." So and we say no one of those. because saving is slow. Saving is slow, except, except when, when you, you save, save, save yeah, save warp. But um, yes, yeah, so this is the sort of final portrait ghost in the game it's the final portrait ghost that'll show up on the game boy horror on the menu if you pull up uh yeah with the size the final boss this is the last portrait ghost so van gore is just like dude you know what i spent all this time making all these ghosts you've done nothing but just ruin my art so yeah you know what how about a battle yeah, so I don't know how I missed that triple. That was interesting. But uh, anyways, yeah, this dude created all the generic uh, normal ghosts that we've been fighting throughout the entire game. So uh, 
Yeah, after we defeat this guy, we won't see these ghosts anymore. Yeah, because this is the last, last of the ghosts finally taking out the source. And, uh, from there we should be, should be good on everything. Uh, so again, these triples, uh, some of them can be a little bit harder like that. Grabber ghost triple, the red grabber ghost. Uh, some of their hitboxes can be a little bit weird, but as long as you do the right move, like, and you're close enough to them without being hit by them, um, then you can definitely get all the triples. Uh, some runners might have a little bit of a hard time with this, but after you've been doing it for a while, it just kind of becomes second nature. Sometimes, like you've seen, it may be a little bit finicky still, but got all the triples, and the last ones just had zero HP for all three of them, so you just burn them all. And then here goes Van Gore, he's just, he's had it now, and he's like, you know what, I'm just so upset that he just shows us hard, and you can just get him. Boom, easy win. Easy money. Easy win. Now we just get this last boo, and the second gold diamond, and then we're on our way to uh, King Boo. So yeah, this has been a lot of, uh, like I said, the game can be kind of short, um, especially because we're 100%ing the game basically in like a little over an hour, like an hour 13, 15, whatever, you know. The estimate is an hour 17, so take into that what you will, you know, for 100% for a game. But I'd still say it's a very fun game, especially to play around the time of Halloween, you know, it's the, it's the spooky season, so might as well play something that fits the mood. So... Uh... Oh, yes. Nice. So that is also some more manipulation by getting the two cycle on that boo and having the boo, ca capturing the boo where the gold diamond that spawns from it will land on you. So that way you can just save warp again instead of having to talk to Egad and then getting the gold diamond, going down the hallway a little bit and scanning a mirror to warp to the uh, foyer. But instead, we can just save warp with the gold diamond, and then it's just beautiful right there. So yeah. that was, yeah. Yeah, you're not supposed to be able to do that. Um, but uh, when I pushed myself into that corner, uh, the gold diamond really had nowhere else to fall but on top of me. Yeah. So uh, by doing that, I'm able to save and quit with that. And it's also cool because Luigi looks like he's wearing really big bling or something. You know, he's wearing like a big diamond ring or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, here's the final boss of the game, King Boo. The final portrait goes, final boss, final everything, dude. This is it. This is the climax. We finally see Mario. We're going to go win. We're going to go all in, dude, and save our brother. Um, but this guy is just like, you know what? We're not going to do that. He's going to turn around. 360 degrees, and uh, he turns him into Bowser for whatever reason. I don't know why. Poor Mario had to get to do him like that. But then we get sucked up into the painting, and then we have to final do the final fight with uh, King Boo, which you'll see soon is not only King Boo, but also a very giant Bowser. Um, he's just gonna come crashing in. Roar. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but but yeah, so the final fight, um, King Boo has 500 HP and you can get him in two cycles, uh, so again, the first and fourth boss in this game, uh, you can get in two cycles, but the second and third you can get it in one cycle. Yeah, I think King Boo was first two cycled in 2013, uh, a runner named Luke was labbing this out because he theorized that it was possible, and this was before our pumping, so you know it was really difficult, yeah. eventually he got it. Yeah, this is, uh, but uh, thankfully with the help of our pumping, it's just 10 times easier, see, 239, that's over half his health. Yeah, 239 is a really good cycle, so... Usually you want to get him to around like 250 or lower, even like 260 will work. Yep. Um, and, it's been uh, pumped, we're, yeah. we're coming but, up on time, by the way. Right. So as soon as uh, King Boo goes into the back minute pop, that's when time is. But last bit of HP. And time. Ah. Woo! GG. Nice. There GG. we go. Got him. Yep, so 
we still have to see if this run counts as 100%. So after a little bit of dialogue here, uh, we'll be able to get to the money counter where we'll see how much money we have. We want to have 100 million. And with those four dupes and extra gems that I got for reassurance. We should have way over that. Yeah, there's no <laughs> way we will verify. not have it. <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah, because that's how you verify the hundo run. Because if you don't get the money, then, well, of course, it's not... It doesn't count. But uh, I think, if actually, there's been some instances where at marathons like GDQ, uh, people hadn't got 100 million in money, so it didn't count. But we still kind of beat the game, so it's still showing off what you're going to do in the game. Yeah. But we should be set for sure here. I so. mean, Luigi was rolling in the cash that run, so... Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, causing a little bit of inflation with the pearl dupes, but I mean, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> we should be we should be good. Um, yeah, yeah. So this will All go right. towards building a better mansion. Well, what's what's your guess, Nick? How how much money? Do you um, I'm a guess. I'm gonna say because you have four million extra money and you mainly got everything. I'm gonna say 104. I'm gonna go with 103. 103, okay. 103.7. Right. Yeah, so it's just after these uh, paintings go in the system because we're capturing all these ghosts uh, for Egad for his uh, gallery, which you can later on after you beat the game, you can see all the ghosts in the gallery. But here we come up to the ghost that we captured in Area 4. Yeah. And then I think we're doing it slow. Yeah, yeah we're going to take yeah, it nice and slow, build up the suspense. It's always <laughs> like that, you know? So definitely really good money so far. I mean, you definitely get lower gems. Well, you know, you, you get six rubies and one emerald and sapphire each. So that's, I would typically get a few more uh, sapphires and emeralds, but ooh, 103.2. I said 103.7. Okay. I said 104, so I was way off. 500,000 over. I didn't win the showcase showdown. Feels Aww. bad, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate to see it. No vacation. But no, no, no yacht rip. But I mean, hey, you know, it's it's all good. That was all a really, uh, really fun run. Uh, thank you so much, HD Lax, for for running this. And everybody, please, if you enjoyed the run, make sure you follow HD Lax One here on Twitch, as well as our commentary for today. That's Glitch PhD. Uh, do y'all have any shout outs or, or anything else that you'd like to add? Thank you so much. Uh, shout outs to Pablo Bleep Ten in the chat. I know he was here earlier. I don't know if he's still here, but. This dude has been speedrunning the game for about 10 months, and he's almost got every single main category world record. It's only a matter of time before he gets 100%. Um, so, it, what like, a boss. Yeah, almost he, a, he's, a perfect sweep, as yeah. uh, you would, might know from like uh, the Golden Eye or Perfect Dark things. They got a clean sweep of the boards. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's really cool, really something. Yeah, but uh, definitely go give him a follow. He's awesome. He speedruns this game almost every day. Um, and then, of course, shout outs to Glitch here in the call with me for doing this commentary. Yo. He's also a great runner. Thank you for uh, having so me go, on, man. <laughs> of course. So go it's check him out, too. Yeah. And then shout outs to Jared's Giants, who couldn't be here today. He uh, he was uh, he was hammered down with schoolwork, so he Aww. couldn't make it. But, uh Yeah. yeah. And of course, shout outs to the uh, Luigi's Mansion community. Thank you guys for being here and uh, watching the run. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, again, I did too. Yeah, As did I. You. And again, if anybody is interested in this game, feel free to go to speedrun.com slash LM, join the Discord, and uh, watch some of the tutorials we have. They're quite informative, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this game. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. Very nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, HD Lax. Thank you, Glitch PhD, for being here. A uh, quick reminder to all of you watching, uh, there's an upcoming event, an all-woman speedrunning event, Frame Fatales returning for another event, Fleet Fatales, that is online November 15th through the 21st. Go to gamestonequick.com slash Frame Fatales for more information. Volunteer selections are out November 2nd, so if you did submit a volunteer application, be on the lookout for that because you might have an upcoming role 
Uh, and of course, a big thank you to our subscribers for making this hotfix content possible. If you have Amazon Prime, did you know that you can subscribe to this channel for free with Prime Gaming? Benefits include ad previewing and some cool emotes, so that's something to consider. And on that note, we are going to take a quick ad break. Conquer's Bad Fur Day is coming up next. Don't go away. Welcome back to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Twitch channel. I am your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you for sticking around, and if you are just arriving to the stream, thank you for joining us. Uh, I've got In the Darkness 5 here, ready to speedrun Conker's Bad Fur Day with the Conker's crew. Darkness, hello, would you like to introduce yourself and commentary for tonight? Alright, hello, I'm In the Darkness 5. I've speedrun this game for four years, and here's the commentators that are really dear to me. Ab and Benja, you want to introduce yourselves? Hello. So I've been oh. running the game for uh, a good seven years and a uh, good friend of darkness and yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember when I started to run this game. We used to run Same it on... Me, I believe. Uh, yeah, don't know when, but... We used to run this game on Nintendo 64, um, just when the game appears on on Xbox, and we're gonna talk about more of that um, later on the run. And yeah, let's have a, a quite a good run today. Yeah, we're doing the, the way. Ch chapters percent, right? Uh, Darkness, that's the schedule for tonight. Yep, chapters. Um... If you want to explain chapters after we click. Oh, for sure. The thing. All right, I'm going to start clicking. There's going to be a 26 second uh, cutscene before the run starts. So if you want to, I'm going to click it now. So when oh, Conquest yes. starts moving, I'll say go. Sounds good. Uh, uh. Do you guys want to explain the version differences? Yeah, sure. Sure. And the category? Sure thing. Do you want to go Bunja or? Yeah, we're going to run today uh, what it's called chapters. Chapters uh, will be the uh, New Game Plus category at some point of this game. We need to unlock the, the chapters first uh, by doing the story mode of the game. And we we can enter to every chapter of the game after we finish the story mode to um, start to playing whatever we want. I mean, so chapter basically we can skip every cutscene of the game except this one. We need to go out to the menu to to re-enter um, to the next sub chapter, and that's the only time we we do this. Um, then. From here, we're gonna start straight forward to the run. Um, Dirt is gonna do uh, uh, the bubble text skip here. Uh, do you wanna explain that art? Yeah, uh, so normally when you walk up there, uh, you have not learned hover yet, and so the game will explain hover to you. So what we do is we do a short hop backwards when we hit the trigger, and then we can just jump and hover over it instead of learning it. Saves about a second. Yeah. Um, this game works fully with triggers. Uh, we're gonna mention that uh, later on the run, but uh, we're gonna explain how the the next room is, is gonna be optimal in function to the run. So the, we want to get the key into the door and try to pull the trigger of the cutscene right when we're there next to be there. So. We're gonna skip a cutscene when Conquer pull off the the key from the floor, and in that way we're gonna save some time. That's that <laughs> that's was a really main good goal. One, by the way, yeah, yeah, that's that good. a pretty good spot. Yeah, you definitely want the key, the uh, key in the camera view. So otherwise, there's a uh, invincibility frames. Yep, this is the. the 
first chapter of the game that was hangover. It's just the tutorial chapter. It's not that hard. Uh, but I think if you play casually, you're gonna have some trouble trying to do the jumps over there. And it's pretty much the, the first chapter of the game. So, uh, right here we're gonna... Bob? Sorry? Do you wanna explain the movement? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, optimal movement is uh, on just regular surface, like he's on right now. Basically just walking forward. Uh, there's certain surfaces that are wet or like grassy that you want to jump over. And then for water, generally, doing a jump in a hover is optimal movement. We are pretty much in the general rules of the any platform game. So what you see there, um, Darkness uh, came up with the with the hype to to get the trigger of the of the B Queen there uh, to unlock the next next chapter. There's a um, kind of a version difference there. Uh, on Nintendo 64, we can throw the the hive to the river, and we're gonna we're gonna skip the catching of the wasp chasing us. That takes around 12 seconds in, in total. Um, that works well on 64 because the the game have more lag. And if you're familiar of the of this kind of kind of games, the lag. Um, helps you to, to do some clips and some some stuff that's it's way easier on those versions. On on Xbox you can pull it too but it's quite difficult because you have a constant frame rate and it's not so optimal to try to do that. Alright so Darkness is throwing three cheese to Marvin now. Uh, luckily uh, Marvin did not burp on him or anything. So that, that wastes quite a bit of time. It's like three seconds every time Conker pukes. Uh, so now he's got to grab two uh, more. boxes are on a cycle, and the, the cheese can be in random positions. Also, Marvin is the first uh, encounter we have with the RNG on this game. We're going to have big RNG issues more, more lately in the run, so this is just the first one. We just don't want to make the Marvin quiz the rat there to be so close to us because, uh, like they say, uh, we can ha we can have some trouble with the gases of the of the mouse. Yeah. So so it is possible to skip the section and clip into the barn, at least on N64 it is. But the way it the triggers don't don't load the room correctly. So if you go in, you just soft lock the game. Yeah, this game is wonderful and loves its triggers. So we're basically doing every chapter in the game. So basically the game is just checking to see that you did this task before you enter. And that's how a lot of triggers work in this game. You you want to talk about uh, a bit of the rules of this category? Arv? Oh yeah, so um, basically you just you know it's pretty standard. Like just we do allow the fifty live sheet because you can't collect lives like you can in story mode, for example. And the game only gives you two lives because it wasn't intended to be played this way. So generally, we just allow it. That and you just. And you pretty much just have to complete every chapter and whatnot. Yeah, also, we we grab every money uh, money stack in this um, in this category. We kind of skip one, but at the end of the day, it's not so um, worthless to to do a like chapters any percent or chapters one hundred percent. We just grab all the money we can. And you that's pretty much the, the rule of this category. Um, what Darkness, what yeah, what Darkness did there, he uh, timed the, the the moment when when the pitchfork went out of that room, 
and he was really close to the lever, so in, in, in that particular time he can jump to the lever, grab it, and skip a, a kind, kind of a cat scene that he, it moved him to the another place of the room, so he basically skipped that. Okay, so he's going for a clip here, so he doesn't have to okay. fight Haybot 1. We got it. He basically just taps A and the Conqueror will just jump through the roof and hits the loading zone underneath. For some reason, there's no trigger you have to hit here. Well, actually there is, but for some reason it, it lets you skip the fight. So... And we have to get Marvin down for this fight to activate. Yeah, so... You can clip before you throw the knives, but again, it's triggers you just fall to your death and you keep dying without being able to even exit out <laughs> so now he's doing haybot 2 and optimally you want to uh get him to shoot the missile and then you want to run towards him so he'll aggro you right away as opposed to waiting a pretty tight movement to done well and um, you can do it with practice but for the first comers will be kind of a bit hard to to learn because we don't want to waste any cycle to get the, the torpedoes into the pipes yeah it's very technical so he did a little trick there he got a uh, a bot to uh, stomp him sooner rather than it skip the animation Say about three seconds there or so. You want to talk about the ladder movement? Yeah, op optimal ladder movement. You want to let go of the stick and jump up as you're going up the ladders. And then hold forward as you're going to be back on, obviously. Yeah, there, there was a, an interesting mechanic on 64. Um, for those of you who don't know, you can calibrate the, the stick on 64. So uh, the game, this game in particular, when you when you move into ladders and when you use the tank, the game uh, doesn't recognize the the end of the axis. So you can calibrate the controller at the point you uh, you can move the stick forward to to the top, and that will be the neutral point. So uh, the the down direction will be more more space to move, so Conquer will, will be climbing the, the ladders uh, way faster than it should, and also the tank will move uh, way faster than it should, so it's an interesting mechanic that we can't replicate on this version. We're probably coming up from the most movement-heavy part of the game. <laughs> um, so the next part, we have to collect five bees, to get a flower to expose herself. <laughs> kind of weird. You'll you'll see it. Um, Don't get into much <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. really say too much. But um, we're gonna be good boys tonight, you guys. So <laughs> we're not gonna be so explicit in, in the things of this game. Just remember that this game was rated mature for the year 2001. So. We're not going to be so explicit in the comments. We're going to be good boys. <laughs> yeah. So it's safe to walk in the water. As long as you're not swimming in the water, you will not lose the bees. And there's a little trick he did there. You might have missed it. Where he's running and he kind of flicks the stick back. So he keeps all his momentum as he turns around. Um, I want to mention that this chapter uh, on on the run is maybe the maybe the, the crucial to to have a, a a good run. The rest of the of the chapters until war are pretty much straightforward. But this one, if you mess up something, um, you're gonna lose a lot of time and it's gonna be hard to recover. Because also we're gonna have um, way more RNG on the rest of the run, so even if we play well, yeah. we, if we have a uh, bad RNG, it's going to be hard to recover from that loss. 
Okay, I got it. I was worried about this tree. Cool. It's easy to die there. <laughs> yeah. Um, normally, if if we jump there and we fall right into the floor, we're gonna die. So what uh, Darkness did there, he, he tried to fall right right in the mountain, so we're not gonna get the, the full damage that we can get. And also, we need to to do some time there to, to do that jump. We're gonna see a similar jump on the Bats chapter, and it's pretty crucial to, to get that one. That's a flower jump. Uh, there's a um, kind of mechanic there to, to do in two cycles. You can't do it on, on first cycle. You need to spam the A button to, to hover right uh, right before the right after the, the first jump and you oh. in that way you will land right right into um, <laughs> uh, on her breast uh, to do the the second jump probably we, we're trying to be good boys <laughs> um basically also, N64 and Xbox is basically the same, but we run on Xbox just because of less lag. It's not because, like, uh, trick differences. It's all the same. It's frame rate and load times. Load times as yeah. well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we have a constant frame rate that, yeah, if you if you compare runs, it's going to be a world on, uh, on the difference of that. Also, um... Oh, the the, cons uh, the the uh, the loading times between chapters is way more faster than than 64. This is a, a huge step forward into the optimization of the game. Uh, you want to talk about like hovering so, the water and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, if you've played this game casually, you know how bad the fall damage is and how little you have to fall in order to take damage. So. But the game has a thing where if you're if you're you know jumping over water, you can hover as late as possible, and you'll still be fine. You can technically get even a jump out of the water and live. Yeah, with full damage in this game, it's either you take one damage or you die. And the, the full damage is pretty short, as I've said. Uh, the water here also resets the uh, bull animation, so it speeds up the fight a little. I'm just moving in a certain way so I can just charge the the cow uh, quicker. And I'm probably gonna take it safe in the the next part. Yeah. Those of you who haven't played the game already, <laughs> what we are doing now is the cows are trying to make some poo to to in in the order to get some poo balls outside of this room so maybe that doesn't make sense but that's how this game works <laughs> so th this is pretty much the 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 general rule for a uh, platform game we hit uh, the first cow once the second cow we hit it twice and then the last we make sure to to hit a three strikes all right so when this is done uh you're gonna notice there's gonna be a uh, uh, darkness is gonna jump out of just the air he's gonna do what you call a buffer input while the screen turns black so you can just jump over the wall that way you can exit you can grab the money and exit the barn faster or uh, the cabin faster you also don't have to learn swimming, so that skips that as well. The game will just give it to you. So yeah, I'll be doing cool range when I go out of bounds as well. Yeah. Yeah, we we used to believe that uh, we can't escape from this room at some point. So the the old skip for this one it was just walk out of, um, out of bounds right into the exit of the, this room. So we found that we can actually make a kind of dive 
without uh, learning how to swim. And we can now skip that that section completely. We can grab the money and get out of there and never come back. So that was an interesting mechanic that we, we learned at some point. So we want to talk about um, optimal movement here? Are yeah, so there's there's a certain way you can zoom in the camera here with C down and it manipulates the position of the beetles to make for very favorable cycles. This is a very recent discovery. It saves like 15 seconds. It's very nice. So he'll just zoom in a couple times. Also, you, you don't have to take fall damage, so we can just fall straight down um, in this area. Because you just land in poo. You just get your yeah, head stuck. If, if we fall right into the the slope well, of the mountain, it, okay. uh, we can skip the, the animation of the of the damage. Also, we can skip the animation of Conquer getting stuck into the mm, this mountain. <laughs> So yeah, all, all we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the poo ball in, going to jump up, grab the money, and just head over to uh, the Bats Tower section. JMP will be off the Bats Tower, by the way. Yes. So you'll have to wait a little longer. That's because of the, you know, the, uh, the toll you have to pay. At this point, we we are collecting enough money to talk with a barrel who is in the windmill, um, and he just wants money to get us in a ride. So this is the whole point of of this kind of section. I mean, the mid game of of this of this run is just to get money to get into the the barrel trigger. So we are doing that. And it's gonna be uh, quite a, an adventure to get there. Oh yeah, yeah. So first we gotta pass, cross paths with the weasels, and then later on the barrel. So yeah, we're gonna be heading into the Cogs Tower. There is a uh, another out of bounds coming up. Uh, this one will be a little bit different. Uh, so in this game, if you go out of bounds and there's a platform above you, it'll just shoot you straight up. So we abuse this here to get to the top right away. Yeah, casually this room is a nightmare, but in the speedrun it's pretty cool. If we do this jump that he, he did there, uh, we skip the, the, the bad cutscene. It's a short cutscene that we skip. There you go. There was a platform above you at some point of that out of bounds, so I think I'm gonna fall. Yep. Oh, oh that's, that's, well, that's a that, good save. That's a backup. Yeah, that's a backup. No, when? Uh. So there, there's an invisible wall over there. It, it's harder than it looks. Yeah. I was just not confident with that jump. But it, it's fine. We got the backup. Yeah. So now we're going to uh, do the cog section. Nothing too fancy we're here. Take in intentional fall damage. And since there's water above here, um, since there's water below, we can just hover so we don't have to take yeah. second fall damage just to get down. You can abuse that mechanic, it's pretty nice. Yeah, the rest of this room is quite straightforward. There's some kind of talk manipulation to get it faster and closer to the the exit of the, of the room that they are, so that's all that we do. To, to clear this room, actually. Yeah, so now we got to collect another two, so now it's really chill. Well, can I ask you, Darkness, what got you into running this game in particular? Um, I was trying to look for a game back in 2016, um, and Rare Replay just happened to come out, and I've played this game as a child, so... I just started playing this on Xbox, 
and I just enjoyed it ever since. So probably like a couple of months after Rare Replay came out, I just started running it. So I guess all of them probably played history this. ever since. Yeah, probably played this back in the day and have like fond memories. So maybe yeah. wanted to proceed with that. It's funny because I, I think every one of us played this game, uh, like when we have like eleven years or twelve, something like that, and it was rated for mature people. So uh, we kind of cheat there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe your yeah. uh, your parents let you play it when you weren't supposed to. Uh, they will never know. <laughs> they, they, will never know. <laughs> they, they bought it for us anyway. Oh, yeah, exactly. Cool. Except for I've actually never owned the N64 version. Uh, I just used my friend's uh, cart. Um, then, yeah. That's <laughs> always how I played it. Either. Yeah, that's always how I played it at a friend's house because I didn't have a Nintendo 64. I showed my parents this game like the probably a year ago, and they're like, "How did I let you play it?" Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Questioning their their uh, decisions. Yeah, I, when I first played this game, I never knew about the the flower the flower <laughs> scene. <laughs> so it's quite loud, and I think I had some troubles with my dad. <laughs> at some point, I don't quite remember. Well, I think I annoyed somebody in my house. Oh also, my fun stuff. I, I bought this game, brand new, at ten dollars in. Oh, I think wow. it was two thousand three, something like that. And now this game new <laughs> will cost like five hundred dollars. Uh, it's like insane. That. It's tough to yeah. get a hold of. A lot of the Nintendo 64 games are, I think. That's the reason why I started running on um, Xbox One, just because I couldn't get the N64 card because it was starting to get too expensive. Yeah. Well, it's nice that this is like an option for, for people that might want to get into speedrunning the game also. Yeah, we have a theory sure. like, because of Series X and that's going to be faster hardware, this game's going to get faster as well. Oh, I missed that. It doesn't matter. Do you yeah, think because, that... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Yeah, yeah there, there was a, um, a time optimization between the version of the Xbox One S and Xbox One X. So we, we saved in total like 30 seconds just to save uh, on loading time. So if we, we have that tendency of the uh, new Xbox, uh, we're going to have something even faster. Oh, that is true. Do you think that there are a lot more uh, discoveries to be made in this speedrun? Oh, definitely. Um, we're only a small community, and uh, we've tried to find some stuff, but this game doesn't really want to be broken that much because of the triggers they put in place for this game. Now, there's a lot of areas you can clip into, or, or like if you use cheats and you hit the loading zone, either the zone's not there, or it loads incorrectly, so... There, oh. there, there's there's a possible skip on a blade section. Do you want to mention that, Arv? Yeah, I, I was going to mention that when we got there, but... I, I mean, okay. I get... Uh, I do you want to actually say something about this part first? Because this is yeah, yeah. a nightmare. So, uh, all, all you do is go left. You don't even need the light. <laughs> you know, he just went right by it. So he just jumped in the water and, you know... Ideally, you want to jump in the water too. It'll shoot you down a little bit. Just make sure to not lose time because there's a full cycle here, and it's a global cycle. So if you lose some seconds, uh, every every fish uh, outside it's gonna have a, a different pattern in, in in the way you expect to to be to be against them. Hmm. Yeah. No, never take the bottom route. Always take the top route. Yeah, never take the bottom route. <laughs> yeah, this is maybe the most boring section of the speed run. I, uh, uh, yeah, I kind of agree. agree. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. So we're coming yeah, up we'll on the... We'll get to the most uh, boring part of the speed run later on when we get there. We're coming up on the uh, boiler fight now. So we're going to uh, take care of the imps uh, in an interesting yeah, way. Uh, 
interesting way. Get um, interesting <laughs> way. And this yeah. is a lot harder than it looks, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's never easy to do these runs, even on real life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, the, there's here is uh, another encounter we have with RNG. These fire imps can appear close to the to the boss who is in front of us right now, and also. Also, the boss have some RNG. We have the best RNG possible. Oh, that was good. There's three we, ways that he, that he can face. Um, we got yeah. the best one. He can either look back, which is the worst one, or one of the sides. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah and we need to, to hit him uh, from a side. Uh, to set up the next hit. Yeah. yeah. That that's determines which way he's facing. Also, some other hidden tech. There's a there's a cutscene here. If you uh, pull the lever at the same time he's jumping on to the uh, to the uh, you know the what you call it um, that part of the floor, it'll skip the cutscene. Very lenient. Yeah, that was really good. Easiest boss fight in the game. In my opinion. The imps are being oh. a troll. Yeah, imps will be a troll. It doesn't matter, I'm getting like a lot of health later on anyway. Yeah, we need to go right now into the trigger of the money and then we are gonna be right into um, inside the Pooh Mountain. The, the chapter that that everyone oh. loves. Oh, you missed the buffer. Yeah, there, there's a buffer input there where you can so hold hard. the uh, cutscene skip button and it'll skip it right away, or else it kind of doesn't let you skip it right away. You can do that for pretty much any cutscene. You just hold the button before. It's just, it depends on when it loads. It's always different, so it's kind of inconsistent. Yeah, so we just mash the button. Those of you that are new with this game, uh, this game actually is based. Uh, it's not based. It had a lot of parody of movies, popular movies that we can notice uh, in in every part of this game. Actually, we have Matrix. We have uh, Jaws. There. We have uh, also Terminator. We have uh, the Clockwork uh, Orange. We have uh, plenty of movie parodies here. I, I jumped in into that zone so I could skip an animation. All right, so, right yeah. now we just got to do some Suicorn and then we have the best boss in the game, quote unquote. Best boss in the video game history, I, I, I will say. <laughs> So there's a, an, another RNG kind of section here. Maybe the 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 first sweet cards that we get, it's not so RNG. But the the third section, uh, we're gonna we're gonna expect to have some some good RNG, uh, and that will be noticed if we can get a hit by the this hand here to help us to knock one of these sweet cards. Um, for you that uh, memorize the song, we're not playing it today. Sorry about that, but it it is a speed run. It is memorable though. Yeah. Um. Great by Tipu actually. Um. It have a pretty interesting mechanic because the the boss itself is based on music theory. Uh, music theory is just the the boss works with the four quarters um, stuff of, of the music partitur. So um, if we get into the the loading songs, loading songs. I mean, when you need to throw him the toilet paper to to make a make it some book from here. That 
we need to try to to be at the end of the the four quarter so right here if you see um, the the great mighty pool doesn't wait until after he he throw the last uh, pool ball he throws six in total in every phase so um he can dive in in every two throws yeah yeah so that can make us uh to lose like two seconds per 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 dive he did or he does and and also also we can we can we need to wait like this for the for the first quarter four quarter to to stop uh playing i mean he always will be singing the uh section in the first quarter of the song so it's quite an interesting behavior he has and it also it's one of the um most affected by rng bosses that we have in this game we can lose like 30 seconds just because bad rng uh, even if we play really well here and that's a big time loss to to have it on the run so the the first phase and the second phase are pretty straightforward he gonna spawn to in the after the sixth throw in the same spot that we 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 showed the last time but in this third section he's gonna appear right when he is not in the last row he's doing some yellow stuff here i'm just swagging yeah it doesn't really matter it's the same speed yeah. it, it, you see, it, it, we, we need to predict where he's gonna be at this point it's it yeah it's Pretty much just a 50 50 of where, he, where he's gonna go after the sixth throw. Also, I think we have one dive on second phase. We doesn't have any dive on first phase, so. Yeah, this RNG is actually incredible so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm high jumping and uh, hovering in the peak of the high, so you'll never hit me. Forgot to mention that. Yeah, he he throws the pool uh, where you're supposed to be. So if you high jump and hover, it, oh, where it, you going? It it doesn't recognize where you're gonna land. Nice prediction there. So we have a really great. That was yeah. really great, great mighty pool. This is probably like better than my PB's uh, GMP. I think it's well, one of the best or... I've had, actually. It should be like a 409 or 411, maybe. This actually could be world record pace at the moment. I, c I don't know the time timer. <laughs> I think that's for the best. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, so we're coming up on the blade section. So in that first room that he's going to enter, if there's a way to clip in there somewhere, you can up warp and skip that section so you don't have to swim. Yeah, this is a potential time save that we can cannot find uh, until today. So this is gonna look scarier than it is. It's just cycles. Yeah, there's a particular way he jumps into the water. I found this strut. It always seems scarier at the top too than it does at the bottom. Yeah. All right, so there, there's a really weird bridge up here. I'm not going on it. I'll never go on it. No, so it's possible to fall straight through the bridge. Yep. <laughs> so it's just gonna hover over it. Yeah, the, the game doesn't detect that texture at some point, so we can't thrust off that bridge. It doesn't even insta-kill you either, it just slowly kills you. It makes it worse. It's like the worst death in the game that you can possibly have. 
Uh, and also you have to come back to the blade section, so it's a big time loss. It's probably like the second biggest time loss in the game. The, f the first being um dying to bees, you have to collect them again. What is the handbill manipulation here? I didn't get the slide off. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, yeah, okay. if you... If you land at some point of that that uh, statue, we can uh, manipulate the anvil to to move actually, and we can save a little bit of time. It doesn't, it's not too much to save, but it's always nice to save time on that. Save video. frames. Yeah, <laughs> we're fighting for frames. So, these guys are RNG, whether they chase you or not. You can kind of manipulate it by going further out, but it's, it's not really it. worth it, usually. Yeah, I'd just rather brute force it, really. Yeah, I'd rather brute force it, really. So, in, in this chapter, we need to... It, it doesn't make sense because we don't need to make things. We things just happen. So we're gonna get here a little dinosaur baby that we're gonna sacrifice, and there's a way to to manipulate him from eating those those Ugas guys. So, Probably Ark can explain it a little bit more because he found it. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so you wanna explain it. Yeah, so what he's gonna do is Loopy's gonna start to go after the caveman, and the caveman's gonna do the little freak out. So, what you wanna do is you wanna get a certain distance away from Loopy so he turns his attention back to conquer, therefore skipping the uh, eating animation. It's a little tricky to do, all four of them. We have the first one. We have the second one. Nice. Okay. Good so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, I consider this split the most. Um, I'm not getting that one. Wow, Mr. Uh, <laughs> come on. <Luffy>. Um, <laughs> I would say this is the most boring part of the game. Come on, wait. Uh, just, just an escort mission, pretty much. Oh yeah, it's um, And two. it's one after another, so we're doing another one after this. Yeah, I think the other one is worse. Yeah. Yeah, the other one's worse. So yeah. We, we, we're gonna try to make the, the same thing we did to avoid the dinosaur to eat some oh. people there. Right now, to get the faster sacrifice possible. I'm not doing the same trick, I'm just gonna eat Come these on, two. Yeah. yeah, so he's gonna just lead Loopy to the guy so uh, he can shoot the slingshot while he's eating them. Minimize the time. At least the music's good in this game. Do any of you have any particular sections of the game that uh, are considered favorites? Um, I'd say spooky. Spooky. A part I haven't done yet. Okay, so we're we're coming up on that in a little bit. Um, yeah, it's in the next twenty minutes, I think. 15 yeah, minutes. next twenty minutes. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's. I I think we all agree that that's maybe the the best section because it have a great music on on the bats section and also that that section in particular is it's quite funny to to learn and and, and do it right. So it's pretty much pretty much the the best chapter we have. So it's because like more technical than other chapters. A little bit, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I we, 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 we
There have been two things. That's not the only intent um, on death in the game. Yeah. We are supposed to go right into the dinosaur to to get in that position, but we found at some point that if you go right into the the right entrance of that of that room, it teleports where you should be after the the dinosaurs inside the dinosaur section. So that's uh, somehow a skip we we found there, and also if you die there. The, the room will reset and we're gonna be right into the next um, next part of the, the chapter. It's a pretty, tech, uh, pretty easy way to save time there. Yeah. By the way, I got good RNG. Um, so I'm, I was just manipulating the caveman to follow me and a fireballs can hit one of them and it gets pretty annoying to do. You can't do this section with less you than four. You can do it with three. Yeah, but it's slower. I'd rather just get one. It, it's dependent on, on how they hit the cavemen. Oh, we need to get close to the guard yep. here. And we enter to Rock So This is another good section. Uh, but for Speedrun, it could be a really... A really painful section because we now here are facing two two stuff we have uh we need to to get a good cycle here which is um affected by the rng so this this rock guy right into the the last part the last rock guy we see it could be a really a really painful to to get into the right spot because he can be in a position that we can throw into the those holes we open to to clear this room. Yeah, there's so we, two. There's five spots you can be in, and two of them, two of them don't work. Right. Yeah. And also, there's a kind of RNG here that conquers will be sculling at some point, trying to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't to keep on that. feet. This is a good spot. Yeah, but the rocks in the way. Um, yeah, okay, that's... It could have been worse. So basically, the camera thing works here too. If you're lo if you're looking at the rock guy, he'll move. Like he'll. If you're not, uh, I'm sorry. If you're not looking at him, he'll stay in the same spot until you look at him again. So while so, while Conqueror is drunk, he can do either two uh, two things. He can. Do like a quick step, or I can just stall. Um, yeah. It's not very fun. Right. It is I'm fun. For, uh, I'm just waiting for my key to run out. Yeah, I, I was gonna mention that. Yeah. So from now, we need to uh, push three rock guys. If, if this one, uh, or the other one, fall at some point, we need to go again and and remake this room for for every drop we fail so it it's not so it, it's hard to to fail the, uh, these guys uh, but also you didn't make it you didn't make the frying pan there what the hell so the the next one is, it's pretty much always the same he not he is not gonna move from there he always will be dancing with with the rock female there. So this one is pretty much straightforward. The the last one is is, is the one we we have uh, trouble because okay okay he did it oh. because we we want to oh, keep the stay there. we want to keep there. the I will say the, the oh. energy we oh, have now. Freeze. Stop doing that. So he we started keep... right there, so I couldn't get him in as quick as I could. Yeah, we did it in, in one cycle. That's and... what we want to do. We want to keep the energy from the second guy we push, and then try to push the last one. So we did it in, in optimal conditions, the this section. Maybe maybe it's not the best, but we we doesn't wait any cycle, so that's cool. Um, um, this if is you the... want to be there, you... Uh, you lose a minute, so that's a really pretty big reset heavy part of the run. 
This is a pretty much a straightforward section. We need just to go with the bomb uh, to the other side of the dinosaur. We can't do the same stuff we did here to enter from another side. Um, there's no much risk in this room. There, there was a one guy who died with with a fireball here, a random fireball. Uh, it was <laughs> me. Yeah. I wonder who it was. Uh, uh, that was. I don't know, maybe three years ago, but it was so random that we, I couldn't explain what happened there. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> All right, do you want to say something about Mugged before I do it? Because I kind of want to concentrate on it. Yeah, sure. So, um, there's the lava race coming up. So basically, normally you would go around four times and you have to hit all the cavemen on separate laps. It is possible to get two of them on the same lap. It is really difficult. So it'll skip a lap and it saves about 20 seconds. And it's considered by far the hardest uh, trick in the game. So I kind of want to just concentrate on this. Yeah, it's a pretty tight movement to get the lap skip. I never made it in my life, even close. Arda and Darkness made it at some point, but it's quite difficult. We try to, to move uh, the closest we can into the corners to grab some, some advantage, I would say. Oh, that was unlucky. He bounced. Oh. Uh, now I have to do it normally. There's a very okay. certain pack for this. Yeah. There's a, a kind of a, a lava folder, and we want to... Oh, he's in make, the light. Ah! We want to make the, the first guy to die before the... The, the lava folder, like the second guy did. So that's that's pretty much the the spot we know that we can go for the lap speed. Oh. Alright, it's pretty safe from here. That was a weird bounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That works really though. There is a, a death pixel here that you'll just die for no reason. Yeah, it's really strange. I like to jump over that. This next, next section. Um, this is another encounter we have with the RNG. Um, this, this guys here uh, will be around these big platform um, in every different position that we that we can see uh, if they are close each other it will be a good uh, or decent RNG. Uh, the, the best way to to do this is try to keep at least one guy into the dinosaur mouth uh, because there's it have he have some random movements so even if you try to tackle uh, them, he could be trying to for to to bite them. Also, there's a strat here to try to kill the, the most possible. It wasn't the the worst, but it wasn't the optimal. It's possible get them all out at once. Yeah. That was a good backup, though. Yeah, that was fine. Uh, yeah. So they have some invincibility frames here. So you kind of have to time it in a certain way where you have to charge at them and bite them to get as much many as off as you can. You usually only get one off with the bite and like one or maybe two with the charge. Also the, the dinosaur movement the dinosaur movement is it's a bit um inconsistent at some point so if you try to go to right maybe he will try to go to left and 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 he will do stuff that we don't want to 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 do so that's the inconsistent we have with the with this dancer it's, it's not it's not easy to move with him i moved in a certain way so i could bite him and then go back in front of him straight away all I do is hold up left, and I'll go back in front of him. That's if you're in a certain spot. 
It also skips the animation of him, like, looking around. Yep. Being boss, if we can say that. It's a bit shaky. So, at this point, we need to go back to the windmill room and then go to the hive. We have some time. If you want to read some donations. That's not true. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. That's okay. No, um, anyone, for anyone watching, uh, shows that are put on by uh, GDQ on the off-season, all the Hotfix shows are uh, kind of supported by uh, the viewers. So if you are subscribed to the channel, thank you very much. Um, and if you have Twitch Prime, you can subscribe to uh, this channel for free with your Prime Gaming. So um, you get some cool emotes, some ad-free viewing. Uh, but yeah, Hotfix is just kind of for fun, uh, for relaxed, kind of chill environment. So thank you all so much for being here. And uh, again, to all the Darkness and the Conqueror's crew, I appreciate you guys being here as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Absolutely, thank you. It's such a wild game. Like, <laughs> really seeing it all laid out like this, it's so fun. Yeah. Nice uh, mask animation skip. And our... our uh, Oh, well, Darkness, I don't know, actually, if you knew this, but you, you're kind of getting close to your, you know, PB. Like, you're in around that range, kind of bouncing back and forth. I don't know if you're oh, timing. Oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> it's bouncing around, but I just <laughs> don't want to change um, it. Yeah, this game's got a lot of RNG, and this one's pretty heavy, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. We we actually call uh, the, the raptor food, what we just did, the, the one with the raptor, this part and zombies, which is coming up, uh, the big three. But yeah, this was a really good run so far. We're probably gonna smash the estimate, probably. Um, well, but we have time, so. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything could happen. Oh, whoops. So the wasps spawn exactly the same way every single time. So. But the way they move is pretty random, which is, yeah. And the hitboxes aren't very great <laughs> as well. This game is not well known for the hitboxes. <laughs> that's some things about this section. Um, just like I've said, the the spawn of the bees are always the same. The movement after they spawn is kind of risky, but it's always a cycle. They they will not move like a. Uh, between up to up to down or right to left or left to right, that will be the RNG. But there, it's on cycles there. So also the hitbox in, in, in this particular section and in the submarine section in work, it, it's kind of weird. We sometimes uh, put the bullet what where we need to put it, and we the game will doesn't recognize uh, the hit as a as a victory for us so there's a couple of, of gun machine mechanics here that it doesn't work so well in the game yeah so um if you didn't know that the shooting is actually extremely hard because they still keep the n64 controls even on the xbox version um of the game so it's also it's super sensitive also yeah. With the hitboxes, it's, it's really hard to do that really well. Also, when, when we use automatic gun machines or stuff, stuff like that, uh, we we doesn't um, hold the, the trigger to, to to throw bullets. We, we just try to tap it because in that way we delay the, the reload uh, time of the, of the gun. But we're so, doing the same thing as what we did at the like, Lexus Saga Lines. <laughs> we're just going pack. So, now we're going to go talk to Mr. Barrel. We got the music overlap. Oh, nice. Hey, that doesn't really happen too often with... Uh, it's not random. It's not random. It's not random, it's just I never really get it. I think it has to do with how fast you skip the cutscene. Yeah, probably. So, 
the, the half of the game that we do here is just to get into this barrel to pull the trigger to get into the next section. And that's why we need uh, uh, some kind of money to get into the barrel. And after that, we're gonna get faint and it's gonna be night. That's when we, we go maybe to the to the most interesting chapters in the game, that is uh, this spooky chapter. Oh, that was really oh, nice. Oh, good jump, good jump. That jump's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> yeah, it's also harder on Xbox. <laughs> yeah, the lag uh, affects your jump height, apparently. Yeah. Um, we jump there, so we just don't have to go around, which is really nice. So? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Go ahead. Now I was just gonna say we're going. We're gonna head into the cemetery now, and this we have to kill. Uh, we have to kill twelve zombies in here. Exactly twelve. And there's a little tech you can uh, double tap the uh, the trigger button to uh, get a faster reload, like so. Yeah, that's more like a. That's the animation. More like a, a reload cancel. Yeah, I got seven on the first thing, so I don't know if that's good or bad. I can't remember. Seven's usually good. It, the spawns are random. You can only have this four spawn, or you could have four additional spawn, or anywhere in between. Yeah, we go on the tombstones to make it easier as well. All right. As soon as he shoots the last one, he's gonna wanna uh, jump over towards the uh, where the the uh, cussing trigger is and wait for Greg. Greg's random too. Generally, that you want to be semi, looking at. That was fast. Yeah, that was Honestly. good. Generally, you want to be looking at the zombie you last killed to speed it up. Oh, can you tell I me about my PB and what my splits are? Because uh, it's kind of a thing that I have to explain. You really want to mention that? <laughs> I... Yeah, um... So I had a run that's supposed to be 125.17, so I should be world record holder by now, but I had to pause in the middle of the run because my family wanted something. Which is unfortunate, but that's just life. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Yeah, we only count the real time attack. Alright, so th there's some there's some tech in this section. Um, so you want to uh, do optimal movement. You want to uh, go up a bit, and then you want to just very briefly tap the R button and then hold up. To get a boost downwards, it, it's a lot faster. Okay, the, the spot of the villagers is always the same. We always do the same route, but the position maybe could change a bit. It's not so so RNG affected, but. Uh, it's just a thing. We always do the, the same the same pillar here in the in this section. So we're gonna uh, go ahead into the last one into the library here. He always there. It's quite difficult to get into the the corner without hiding into the shelves. Once in a while, that guy can be in the other area. That's really rare. Yeah. But yeah. Um, we go for the whole villagers. If one of them can hit Okay, us, I got bad RNG here, so I might have to get here. the last one. Okay, that's safe threat because... Oh, man! Yeah, oh. I just want to say that. That's usually the one you get hit by. That's... That's rough. Batman, it could be twice. But 
what's nice about this section is you always enter with four health. You never have less than four health. So. And we need health coming up for the next part. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. We're going to see maybe the, the biggest time save in this run after this section. So if we need health at some point, at least three, I think. But we are plenty of health now. So we're gonna we, we're gonna pull at, at the out of bound here. It's a pretty much a really easy out of bounds that we do here. The, the hard thing is to jump into inbound here, get the full damage without dying, and get the lever. We got it. And we skip. Yeah, that was for first try and really saves, good for a for a run. That saves five minutes. Yeah, you don't have so you just skip the other two keys. Yeah, the hardest part there is to get the timing to pull the the hover of conquer there. Yeah, if you do early, you're gonna uh, get the f full full damage there, and if you do if you do it late, you can hover there. So it's quite a really uh, hard. Uh, Hard time to do it. It's not so easy to learn. It, it, maybe this is one of the hardest things you, the newcomers, have to learn of this speedrun. All right, now we're just uh, moving to the next area, so we can just chill for a bit. Bro. Yeah. We we just make sure we not hold forward here because the, the movement of the barrel in directions it's really weird if we hold forward at the same time so that's maybe the yeah, hardest part yeah 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 just down the hill though <laughs> so we're gonna go back to the tutorial room of hangover and then we we're gonna go ahead into war. We have like a minute and a half here. We know much action. Don't fall. There's very badly uh, defined edges here. <laughs> we used to always say that. Because when you touch a slope in this game, you lose all control and you just fall. <laughs> it's cruel. It's... Yeah, this part is really nerve-wracking when you're going back on, on PB Pace Run. Shoutouts to getting world record with a fall here. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this is probably the hardest platforming section in the game as well, and we have to do it twice. That's the for war. So uh, in war, we have like a kind of introduction to war first. We need to clear a room of a couple of teammates that uh, have a plane crash and and um, kind of screw up the the only entrance to to the the ward i think and so we need to clear with the, the these purple guys we're gonna see we it's just kind of like another escort mission we do we have to dodge some mines in a couple blocks a few blocks and the infamous rng hill Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's an eel right there on on water that we need to manipulate to activate a, a couple of um, electricity points, and, and there's kind of a weird movement that the eel have in, once we we land in first place, but. It's a joke that the yield is already. It's maybe in the same spot it's, every time, but uh, it, it's gonna have a, a, a different movement probably that, that in, in different runs. 
it's not that bad. Yeah, it's it's not a, a, a time loss. It's just the <laughs> it's just the ill. We're gonna see it right here. So he was in in a good in a good spot because he was um, looking to us, and sometimes he is facing to the other side, and it has some time to to make the the turn to start uh, start chasing us. But it's pretty much the same. We always uh, get into the drown animation, uh, really close to the drown animation, so. Uh, that's that's a good. Uh, oh, I missed. It's a good spot to know if we, if we do it right without losing time or not. So we need to do uh, what we did here in the opposite direction. Just put pull the the purple guy to the other side and snipe him with a with the fire nut. Um, I don't think I'm gonna risk that. No, that's, nah, that's not the good cycle. Almost was. No, I missed the slingshot, that's why I didn't get the um, yep. good cycle. So I'm actually losing time here, but it doesn't matter. We're having fun. Just cycles. It's a global cycle, so. I have to wait. As Darkness said, he needs to wait because of the missing shot. I probably could get away with that. Oh, this try. is gonna be really tight. Oh. I got it. Oh, nice. <laughs> I mean, you have to risk it for the fans, right? Get some. Alright, time for the assault. Do you wanna talk about what I'm talk about the guns? We could talk about the fence. Oh actually before, yeah. before that. Yeah, the um you can just there's a part of the fence you can just crawl under. Shout outs to retro runs. You're always gonna get hit. You're always gonna get hit there. Um so <laughs> That skip of the fence uh, works either to the in in this part of the the chapter. It, it's the enter to the to the world and going outside works too. So uh, I think it, it's very appreciated. It's more appreciated from the outside than from the entrance. I think. So we're going to try to run here the fastest possible without getting a snipe at a shot like that. And we we doesn't need to clear this room actually, we just want to kill the last guy and that will be count as clear the room. Alright, we are now entering the infamous crash room. The game doesn't like this room. The game can potentially crash. I've had plenty of world record paces die to this crash. 20% chance. Yeah, we got it. Yay! Oh. We, we got the crash. Oh. <laughs> you know, I was debating not saying anything in case it happened and catching everyone with a surprise. 20%, huh? Dang. Yeah, it's, uh, it is rough. Yeah, that's got to be insanely frustrating um, to be this far along in the run, only to have it uh, crash on you. It definitely and it happens quite often, to be Aww. honest. Well, no worries in terms of uh, the show here. We, we can hop right back in. I have to do this section again. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it, yeah, it loses like a minute. But with Rare Replay, you can just hold start and then... 
start back in insanely quick. Because I yeah, skipped the Nintendo. I want to mention something about the, the chapters um, run. If we, if we somehow get a crash um, before we met the barrel, if we try to re-enter into chapter section that we, we must to be at that point, um, the game doesn't recognize the amount of money you had. So in the whole section the, before the barrel, um, you can have a different uh, an amount of money that uh, you supposed to have. So um, if you cr get a crash of the game, for example, if you crash on Great Mighty Pool, um, you can continue the run from there, and then when you get into the barrel chapter, you doesn't, you will not have the enough money to to unlock the the trigger. So uh, if you want to run this game, just re-enter to to that section when you get into. But like we we get the the crashing war, we doesn't need to. We doesn't have trouble with the money. Is a relatively new strat that Arb came up with not long ago. Just puts you yeah. in a better position for uh, the final Teddy that spawns right there. So you don't have to wait for him to come out from behind the box. He also gets kind of stunned there for a second, so it, you're less likely to get hit overall. What'd you say? If you stand still, he doesn't do anything. I didn't know that. I just like walking forward to him. Generally, you stand still and then like maybe halfway or so you start to move. I think that's the best way of doing it. This next section, um, as we said before with the machine guns, um, there's kind of an issue with the, with the hitboxes. Also on Nintendo 64 version, this room, um, it's pretty annoying because it have a, a really downfall on the frame rate. Uh, maybe it works like on 18 frames per second here. So that, um, plus the, the gun machine hitbox, it makes really annoying this room. So we don't use the, the gun machine and we just use our, our, own, our own guns here. To kill this one. Yeah, the reloading is much quicker and it's much more accurate. It's awfully nice that it's just a, a one bullet kills him. Yeah. Probably gonna mention it again, but they didn't tweak the controls at all, so it's still N64 aim, so it's really hard to aim as well. This pause here I don't like. That pause seems random. I don't know if it is, but I don't yeah. think it is because it's happening every time. It's weird. I, I mean the lane. Oh, the length, yeah. But these teddies always come out in like the same order. Oh, I, I thought I was on a different cycle. That's fine. Usually I, um, with the guns out, I usually go forward and try and kill the rest of them. Ah, uh, yes. Everybody's favorite RNG section. Rodent. So oh, Ro Rodent likes to stop and just look around a lot. And it, it can lose a lot of time. Well, it doesn't matter here, but after this cutscene, it matters. From the mine spiders here. And you can't skip them, unfortunately. Fun fact. And if don't we don't do Rodan, the next room doesn't load properly. That's right. Triggers, man. But fun fact, in Live and Reloaded, you don't have to do this. You can just run straight there. Oh, 
Are there very many differences between uh, that version of the game and this uh, yes. particular version? Yeah, um... Bob, uh, do you want to explain them? Uh, there's certain things like this section, for example. Uh, there's a lot more of the uh, green enemies, the ones with the, like the spike on their head. They're they're everywhere. There's a uh, babies that you have to kill. Different camera angles. Camera angles. So it feels oh. like playing a different game completely yes. at times. Okay. You have a, a, a movement, a, a, an optimal movement with because the conquered in this game use a frying pan to as a weapon. On Live and Reloaded, he used a bat that if you can move uh, pretty free with the bat, so you can uh, um, you can abuse from that to do a movement on that game. I can't believe and I got that. I can't believe I got that. Right. Yeah, that room uh, that Darkness mentioned, um, we are supposed to clean that room to instead of try just to run into the door. If you get one hit, you are in a real trouble because uh, probably the rest of the teddies will hit you, and that works quite well in the run. Yeah, that room with the lock is just a death trap. Yeah, it's like a ninety percent chance you're gonna die. Oh well, then that was very good. You didn't die. <laughs> mm. That was the soft lock karma. The soft lock didn't happen, this would probably be like well we're equipped slash baby chase. I don't know. Crash. I can't really say the time. It's a crash, not a soft lock. Uh you know what I mean. <laughs> uh as do we I said, explain uh, thing? Yeah, as as we said uh, uh, at the beginning of the run, uh, on 64, if we um, calibrate the, the controller to to get more amount of forward uh, input, we don't need to to activate the first um, bridge here. So we can just go right into the into the mountain and we skip some time there. That's maybe the with the high skip that we can potentially do it, uh, but it's a bit difficult here. That's maybe the the one trick that we can't replicate in this version. With the tower there, we can hit the back leg by just sliding down that slope. So we can hit two of them at the same time. So we don't have to like uh, mm -hmm. activate the third bridge and go around, which is really nice. Do you want to say something about the sub sub? Oh yes. Um, basically, the sub hitboxes are very accurate. You, you're gonna see that. <laughs> yeah. I, I I predict that you're not gonna miss a single one. Oh, it's <laughs> possible to get that first one, by the way, but it's, it's dependent on when it I, shoots. I I was too slow. Yeah, it's it it's dependent on when it shoots. Oh look. Man. Oh wow! I expected you to hit it. Oh look. Yeah, look. <laughs> Sometimes you hit on top of it, it doesn't count, and then other times you shoot nowhere near it and it counts. Yeah, the hitboxes are this. This is probably like the worst hitboxes in the game, and they make no sense whatsoever. Yeah, we need to hit three subs on first phase, five on the second, and seven, I think, on the last one. Um, that's pretty annoying because we kind of have trouble with all of them. Also, if they are close to each other, we can uh, do a double hit for free. Maybe we can do something like here now. So we see there uh, six uh, subs, but uh, we just yeah, want to get five. five. I'm just waiting for them to oh. shoot. Also, if you if you hit the six um, six subs here, I mean in the in the other phase, uh, it counts for the next one. So it it doesn't. I say didn't know that. Much. Does it actually? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I've never noticed that. I was trying to get double there. That also can happen. Look, I'm hitting nowhere near it, and it's just <laughs> it's janky. <laughs> Come on, man. Wanna, wanna talk about the little girl arc? Before yeah, we're up to it now. So, 
next we're gonna have the uh, the experiment fight. Uh, so there, there's you can uh, shoot the teddy an extra time, and then the button will open up on his back sooner, and that will skip the cutscene of uh, I don't remember what it was. It just skips a cutscene. Yeah. yeah, it's a cutscene where the little girl says a couple of nice words to us. There's also a, a cutscene where he, he the, the the big uh, teddy bear um, crouched to to get the little um, girl there. I'm not liking my health situation. And just. Uh, die? Uh, I didn't. There's the cuts in the enormous I missed one, yeah. Alright, you wanna talk about this room? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, don't die. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, with the lasers, those top ones, if you hit them, they will kill you. 100%, they will kill you. Without fail. Yeah, don't walk into the blue lasers either. It is possible to get through those blue lasers, though. But there's no loading zone because of the triggers. So we just climb onto this steel box to see them easier. Um, you can either get either an indirect hit or... Wait, I might die. Oh, I had to look at it. That was weird. Yeah, you have to do that. Also, if you die here in this moment, um, the laser will be deactivated, so it's not so much time waste. It, it's weird. The game gets confused and it spawns you uh, back where you came from, but there's no lasers. Oh yeah, um, if you don't do that uh, that trick right there, uh, you will get bombarded with rockets. You, you can jump over that fence too, that was the old strat. Yeah. yeah. And it was quite difficult because, um, in fact, we, we used to do that uh, strat to try to go over the fence uh, on 64, and that section also have a lag issues problem. So um, and that was a really tight jump. Uh, even if you was on uh, PV pace, it was Whoa. even harder to to try to to not make a mistake there. All right, so he just skipped the cutscene there from the windmill. There's supposed to be like an invisible wall all around it, but for some reason, right there, that doesn't have an invisible wall. Matrix. Yes, Matrix. You have a quite an interesting mechanic that this is kind of, I don't know how to say it, the slow mo movement. And uh, you can also kill the, those guys uh, without the movement, but you need to take. They need to take more hit, hit, uh, hit. More hits, uh, yeah. The, um, yeah, than you usually do on on the Matrix animation. So every movement I'm making here is deliberate to set up um, cycle defense. Also, that's unlucky. Yeah, this is really bad because sometimes you get into you get hit and you get into a spot that you can't move again because they will hit you again and when you are not in matrix animation you are more um, exposed to get a headshot yeah they can insta kill you but usually um they have really bad aim so we just abuse it but there's one one way later on where i have to shoot al he'll probably headshot me Oh, really unlucky. that never happens. Yeah, this is really unlucky, and I'm not liking my health situation because now we can't get any more health anymore. Yeah, so on the last phase, you should try to shoot one of the guys to uh, throw his aim off, or else he'll hit you every time. The one after this. Also, um. The aiming for this is also really sensitive. Yeah, okay. so I had to shoot that guy to make him make him a really bad aim on. 
So when the last guy despawns, I just jump straight away so we can just keep shooting them. It's worth noting once in a while they can get kind of stuck in a spinning animation. And there's nothing you can do like about that. it. Look like that, yeah, yeah, that doesn't happen at all. Wow, well, this is one of the this is one of the funniest <laughs> Matrix games. Alright, we're coming up to the final part of the run. Um so far, I'm I'm actually really happy with this run. Getting the, the money right here, it's uh, I'd say it's difficult than it looks. Yeah, the hitboxes aren't. It's kind of like it's almost like the key hitbox in the beginning. It's a little. Right, do you want to talk about Alien real quick? Yeah, Alien can be frustrating. Uh, so he can either he uh, can either spin time as well. You can either spin, bite, or back up. You want him to bite every time. But the, fir the first one, you can just hit him. So he's going to do a little trick called uh, the Pappy Spin, where uh, he holds uh, the C right button, uh, uh, as well as the uh, you know the normal button you used to spin him with. It'll uh, make him spin faster. You want to get ready on time? Yep. Cool. After the third hit. Oh, you don't want this run to be over, do you? Oh, there we go. Prepare the time. And time. GG. That was a really good run. It was a Way really good estimate. run. Yeah, you smashed through the estimate. Goodness. The only reason the estimate is so high is just because we can lose uh, a minute everywhere. Oh, but yeah, no worries about that. And and, and you know the, the game crashing too doesn't yeah. doesn't help things. Doesn't so help. No, that was frustrating a stuff. Yeah, but the game um, up. I it wasn't really frustrating. Mean, I kind of wanted to show it off. Don't believe it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's okay. It, you know, <laughs> they're like features. You know, <laughs> they're they're part of the yeah, run features. experience. Let's give me an idea. Oh, he's got uh, ideas. Uh, uh, 2906, you beat my time, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, right. well. Here's the plan. I won't tell anyone that it's been a lockup. Quite yeah, a that's bad one. <laughs> yeah, that's Conker. Yeah, that's Conker. Really, <laughs> really like, weird, wacky game. I don't know. Weird, wacky oh, game. Uh, I, I agree. I, I didn't think I'd be seeing the Xenomorph so soon. <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, we had the uh, alien on less uh, the time capsule, really so that's grimy. kind of amusing to me. But um, um thank you so much for for running this game, baby? uh, Darkness. Oh, Do you have any uh, shoutouts that you'd like to to give before we wrap up tonight's show? Um, shoutouts to the commentators. Yeah. Shout out to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. thanks for having me on. Oh, it really course. means a lot to us. Uh, <laughs> this is a good step forward in in Conquer's direction. Oh yeah, and and I know you, you all were excited oh. about uh, Conquerors being featured oh. on uh, Games Done Quick. Uh, it seems like the Conquerors yeah. community is really close and and friendly, and I love to see that. So so thank you again. Yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed right. this run, everyone watching, okay. please make sure you follow you our runner to tonight. Say. That is in the Darkness oh. Five here on Twitch, as well as our commentators. That's our Obliterator oh. and Benja Castellan. Thank you all very much. Okay. Uh, I guess I have a couple of Tales reminders to our viewers. Uh, HGDQ Ready? 2021 online Check will take place shot. January 3rd to January right. 10th, 2021, On of course. And the games list will be released sooner. this Saturday, October 31st. Three, so look out for that. Two, Feel free to tweet us at Games Done Quick and uh, let us know what you're hoping to see on the schedule. Tomorrow, we have the finale of the Hotfix Gauntlet at 7 p.m. Eastern. We have Andy and Alpha 5 in our grand finals. Come see who will take home the crown and become our Hotfix oh, no. Gauntlet champion. Of course, thank you all for uh, subscribing, for making this show and other Hotfix shows possible. Uh, to all of our friends in the United States over the age of 18, don't forget to vote next week. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time.